think of the uh, <laughs> P's and A's and M's. <laughs> yes. Think about P's, mm. P's, A's, and M's. Think about P's going in places. No, well. no, ew. Uh, dear God. Think okay. about think about searching someone's phone and seeing things you don't want to see. God. Yeah. Have you had to do that? Oh, I don't want to ask yeah, later. Exactly. We'll ask yep. later, okay. Hello and welcome to Depend Explaining, the podcast, your favorite military related podcast ever, obviously. I am Jen, here again by myself. Because Veronica is on vacation, guys. I told you this already. Um, she's having a wonderful time, so lucky. And she'll be back soon and we'll get back to our true crime and fun stuff after that when she gets back. But in the meantime, we are going to do some pretty awesome things. You heard our episode already about my friend Morgan talking about her double proxy by marriage. So crazy still. So crazy. I've never yet met somebody who did that or even just a single one. So to have known somebody now that does it, has gone through that, it's crazy. Anyways, before I get into introducing our awesome new interview guest today um don't forget you can reach us over at dependisplaining at gmail.com for all your questions concerns i don't know anything you want to talk about i guess we're here all the time as we always tell you find us on all your listening platforms make sure you rate and subscribe share with your friends it's a good time and i guess well without further ado (laughs) i'm just gonna jump right in so we've already been talking for a long time. <laughs> None of you have known. It's okay, though. Um, I'm going to introduce you our new guest. Uh, we didn't even talk about how to introduce you. This would have been <laughs> a great idea. <laughs> so you can't say anything yet because they don't know who you are yet. Our interview today is with an OSI agent. Ooh. Um, he really wanted some fancy music, but unfortunately, copyright will not allow us to do that. So, this is all you get. This is spe- special agent. Do I get to say that? Oh my god, so fancy! Special agent Dan Scarola. Thank you. That was <laughs> that was every introduction I've always wanted. <laughs> it's a roller coaster. Thank you. I that don't was... know what happened there. <laughs> I appreciate that. You are allowed to say special agent. Okay. Absolutely. As you drink out of your special agent OSI mug. Yeah. You guys, here, let me use this very fancy special agent OSI mug, and it's just everything I hoped and wished for. And your badge number would be 007. Mm. For sure. Yep. This year I graduated high school, too. Wow. 07. Wow. Okay. I well, know. Look at Hand this. signals and everything. <laughs> You pulled that out of the holster very quickly. How yeah. long have you been waiting to do that? I do it all the time. Okay. I'm it's a party trick, I'm 06. Oh. Yeah, I know. So is Dave. Okay. Dave's 06, too. Yep. I'm old. But you guys, fine. do you have a, like a rhyme? Because ours is 07 is heaven. 06, 06. is dicks. Yeah. I, yep. <laughs> no. You are correct. Yes, you are correct. Uh, Dan Scrolla back in 06, not, not a good look. Um, I think everybody in high school, though, is just... Ugh. Yeah. No. I mean, I think some people ha- like themselves in high school because they were probably good good people, yeah. good kids. Um, but I was... I was okay. Um, I regret, re- regret, regret a lot of things yes. from high school. High school. Was a- but I think most people thought I was a nice person, so... I think you're a nice person. I appreciate I think that. if I was a senior and you were a junior because you were 07... <sighs> I think I'd be like, oh, Jen, she's a nice person. That's funny because not a lot of people knew me, so you probably wouldn't have thought that. I would. (laughs) Um, Yeah, if you were, I don't know, looking at the guy that was the eighth man on the basketball court, that was me waiting for my shot. Um, But I think high school, um, a lot changed throughout the years. Many different Mm. looks, outfits, losing the glasses, and going to contacts. That oh. was a big deal for me. I was like, Whoa. check me out. Yep. Um, 
no high school 06. Uh, that's kind of where it all started, though. I like that. That was a good segue. Hey. Wow. It's like See? you knew. I, I, it's just, it comes out like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you, honorary special agent, Jen. <laughs> right That's here. That's right. She already knew. I already knew. I'm there. Look at that. Yeah. I feel so important now. <laughs> I, 2006 to now, I'd be like, me as a special agent with that title, there's no way. Did you ever like think that you would... In high school, did you even think that you would join the military? Yes, okay. uh, I think yeah. In eighth grade uh, was when I made the made the oh, choice. Wow. Yeah, so it was because um, of September 11, two thousand one. Okay, that was my why. That was my reason. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as I saw the planes of the towers, not too far from where I'm from, um, and the effect that that had on my family, and myself, and others, and the country, I was like, I want to do two things. Either be a Marine or be NYPD. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you can see, I am you neither are none one of them. Of them. <laughs> nope. I am not. Um, but I just knew that I wanted to serve my country or my fellow New Yorkers. Um, but mom said no to the Marines. Mm-hmm. And when you're five foot two, mom is uh, fine. Italian mom uh, tells you no, you go to the next office. And that's the United States Air Force. There you go. And the recruiter got me. Only the, good. Best. Only the best. Only the best. Uh, aim high, fly low. Um, <laughs> uh, and that's kind of where it all started for me, for sure, was when I was old enough to, to join, that my direction never never shifted. I wanted yeah. something to do with service. And that was, for me, that was, that was it. There was nothing going to stop me. And my academics showed that because I didn't really care anymore. It was more about sports and um, what I can do to join the service as soon as I could. Mm-hmm. So I think about eighth grade, an event made me, an event changed my whole life. Yeah. Where if that didn't happen, who knows? What would you be doing now, <laughs> right? Seriously. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know, to be honest with you, because it, it, it happened so young. Um, I want to say I'd be involved in sports somehow as a journalist or a broadcaster or an artist of some sort graphic design uh, those were my two callings art and sports mm-hmm. so or a dj i mean the headphones really like work for your head right now i so. feel like i could open <laughs> up at coachella or tomorrowland um yeah and probably mix my own intro music so um yeah so if you want intro music then you better make it and send it i will okay. i'm going to do it <laughs> so um DJ scratching and everything. D- wicked, wicked, wicked. Uh, yeah, I don't have a DJ name yet. Oh, well, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we'll... your wife is already a DJ, so. Well, DJ I, tab. So. Uh, listen, I'm in the shadows. You with are those compared to her. Playlist. You are. You are. Because 10 o'clock <laughs> at night, I'm getting bugged. Actually, not bugged. I'm getting wonderful questions from my <laughs> wife uh, about songs for her spin class. And mm-hmm. I am just. Given her all the all the bangers, so sure that is why her spin class is awesome. Sure. Uh, no free shout outs, but um, <laughs> yes, my wife is the best <laughs> spin instructor in the Pacific. Um, absolutely, one hundred percent, and so, we miss her dearly. I'm, and I tell her every day I need her home so I can take spin again before yeah. school starts. But just like OSI, hard workers are in the shadows. Oh, look Whoa. at you. <laughs> You guys, you could be a professional <laughs> podcaster. Oh, what man. is this? This is it. These, these segues. He- the headphones give me life. It's the headphones, life. right? Yeah. I just feel like I'm I'm feeling myself right now. Yeah. This is nice. It's the caffeine that's helped me. Caffeine, mm-hmm. looking at the bright gold mug. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Gold badge is, is wonderful. Plus having your awesome lawyer-esque yes. desk lamp behind us, too. So for these wonderful listeners, think of any Law & Order episode, um, any Bad cop show back in the 90s. Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde as well. <laughs> Think of every crusty detective with like a cigarette in his mouth. His tie is all loose. And he's just rummaging through this 10-part folder. And there's just one light in the whole scene. It's that like dusty lawyer mm-hmm. lamp with that, that blue or green hue with that chain. Yep. That is what is giving us light right now. <laughs> it's because I just... <laughs> 
go over all my case files late at night. Sorry, wife. Sorry, kids. I gotta find the next murderer. It's not it at all, but... No, but, I mean, it's got that vibe, so just in case you yes. needed it, it's there. It's it giving there. us inspiration right now. It is. It really um, is. It's more for like, hey, who are my top 10 players for fantasy football mm. uh, next mm-hmm. year? But um, extracurricular work activities as well. Or yeah. podcasts. Either pod- one. Yeah. It's a great life Same level. Same level. Yeah. So if I'm doing a fantasy league for podcasters... Number one pick, I'm going Jen. I'm going to Pendus Blading. Yeah, yeah. No free shoutouts. Yeah, but for real. Yes. Please give us all the shoutouts. Yes. I told Dan, like, people like us, but we're just, we're not as high as, like, you know, True Crime Garage or, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Joe Rogan, I mean. Well, I think. <laughs> one could only hope we could be as famous as Joe Rogan. You have to start somewhere. It got, exactly. We started, we're this. starting somewhere. Maybe this is it. I think our interview is going to be our breakthrough. And Japan Explaining is just going to skyrocket out of here. It's going to be insane. And then who knows where we're going to talk again because you're going to get We're so going to be famous. so famous that yeah. it'll be like, I don't have time. Yep. Take me with you. <laughs> Take me with. Um, no, thank you for the introduction. Um, I do hold that title um, near and dear to my heart. I do. Um, just because, again, going back to why I joined... I wanted to do nothing but counterterrorism when I saw what that was and how, and I was like, man, there's some, there's some bad in this world. Wow. So you got to think as a 13 year old, finally realizing that, um, seeing loss, uh, I want to do nothing. I want to do everything to prevent that. Yeah. And that's what's taken me, you know, it took me a, a many years in the service to kind of scratch that itch and I'm continuing to, to chase that. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied to be honest, but I'm not mad about that. I'm okay. So that's um, good. Yeah, to be a special agent is super important to me. Um having being a young security forces member was near and dear to my heart, but transitioning to the dark side uh <laughs> and going through some pretty hard training to, to earn that um definitely means a lot to me. So Yeah. Okay, so when you first joined you were placed in security forces. Did you want to be there or did you want Yes, okay. uh, I actually did want to be there uh, mm-hmm. because my recruiter, remember I, I skipped the Marine office and I went right into the Air Force. So I moved from like a military recruiting office with like, you know, camo netting and like posters and war, go fight war. And I moved over to the next office mm-hmm. with these like long sleeve looking like United pilots <laughs> with nice ties and nice smiles and um, a very pristine uh, office, and they were like, "Hey, yo, yeah, no, nine eleven, yeah, let's 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 go get them, let's go get them, Bucko." <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say Bucko, by the way. I'm from New York. They probably said a lot of other things, um, but he showed me a video for security forces. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told him about NYPD. I told him how I just wanted to go fight war. That's all I did. That's all I wanted to do. He showed me a recruiting video for security forces, and that was all. Humvees and ATVs and like riding in helicopters and That's repelling. All it took. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, they're like have like horrendous camel paint, block, <laughs> yeah, clogging their pores, loving life, eating dirt. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. Sign me up. And I get to be in the Air Force. Yep, for sure. Um, and he, it took probably 19 minutes to really convince me. So. Um, that's, that's what it was. And they were like, yup, got this one at their lunch break at their like three hour lunch break. They were like, like, yup, that, that Danny kid, that ginger Scarola. (laughs) Yeah. Who thinks he's Italian, but he's got red hair. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, we got him. So that was, yeah, I would say that was probably June. Yeah. May, June Mm timeframe of, of 2006. And then a few months later I was out. So, um, right after graduation, I was out. Oh, you were ready to go. Uh, yes. I was, well, yeah. I think I was forced to be ready, as all my <laughs> you friends, have a choice. as all my friends shipped off to their uh, their colleges and yeah. began underage drinking and having all this fun. And um, here I was because it was kind of it's kind of rare to join the service and list it as you know, if you will, to from my hometown. Uh, a lot of peers from Long Island, New York, will go to a prestigious high school and go to college and then. Go to the Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, whatever it is. Mm, they become um, officers. They become officers. Where 
people like myself who may have ruined, I don't say ruined, but <laughs> didn't have as large of a brain or potential, if you will, immediately enlist. And it's just kind of, it hasn't changed with me. Like, I want instant gratification. Um, I want to see the fruits of my labor as soon as I can. Um, and that's at 17, 18, that's exactly what happened. How can I get to the fight as soon as possible? Because who knows if I would have waited four more years, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunities that I've had uh, to go fight in Iraq. So um, I got what I asked for. Yeah, it's something that I'm continuing to deal with, but I look around and I'm very proud of of that service. So nice. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so you okay? So you started in security forces. Mm-hmm. You told me this before. I didn't even I didn't know you had you could be in any career field before you get into OSI. Yeah. It's not something you jump into right away out of basic and get picked for. No, it's not. Only only officers out of ROTC mm-hmm. uh, can go right into OSI. Um, other than that, um, it's either through the Air Force Academy. So um, from the Air Force Academy as an officer right into OSI, as an ROTC. Other than that, you have to be, if you're enlisted, you have to have a career field. Normally, it's between three to six years, depending on your rank. Um, I think that's very smart because... OSI, we want someone with a little bit of scar tissue. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure all their upgrade training is completed. Um, they have a couple of PCSs, maybe a deployment, some TDYs. Um, and really understand what the Air Force is like, and then after that, you go through the pretty uh, pretty strict background process, application process. And then for me, um, it took almost took almost nine years um, until I finally was able to kind of cross over the dark side. So the way my career kind of worked out. So. Mm-hmm. In today's day and age, today's Air Force, yeah, you can be a staff sergeant in three to four years and come on over to OSI. So the way promotions are or opportunities or people that just want to challenge. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you what, if you just don't like a career field and you want to become an OSI agent, um, it's going to be tough because we're going to see right through that. Um, we want to, if you want to challenge, if you want to do something greater, greater than yourself for high impact, we'll, we'll take you for sure. Come on in, have a seat. <laughs> I'll turn this lamp on with its chain. <laughs> so um, I wish I, I should probably bring that to my applicant interviews you sh- now. You like it's just a dark room. Turn off all the other lights and just click mm-hmm. the lamp light on. With a random case file yeah. with like nothing in it. Yeah. Just try to intimidate the shit out of them and be like, is this really what you want? Though? They're going to be like, what are you doing? You're Can like, we turn the lights on? Do. Yeah. Like, no. Especially young it? young airmen these days, a lot smarter than me. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> uh, sir, can we just turn the lights off? Like, this is kind of weird. I'm gonna be like, yeah, you're right. Let's let's do that. No, I'll be like, no, this is this is it. <laughs> this is my. You wanted to be here. This is my interview. Yeah. I ask the questions. Yeah, there will be no questions for you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, what is your biggest fear aside from me? <laughs> Uh, Sir, I'm not afraid of you. I'm sorry. No, but. not at all, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's something. I'm my life right now, but uh, lot, other than that. <laughs> that. That's a lot of questions that I get is like, hey, how? How can I come become an agent? How can I become an agent? Yeah. Because it's a lot more, which I'm sure we'll get into. It's not more than just like a nice suit or civilian clothes. Um, yeah, because which is weird. So you are active duty. I am. But you guys do not wear the uniform. No, um, active duty, enlisted, no matter what you are in the field, um, Mm -hmm. it's to help with the integrity of the investigations. I think just masking that rank makes things a little bit easier for investigations um, Mm -hmm. because we want to eliminate that command influence where if I am talking to a chief, an E9 or an 06, a colonel, they don't know what rank I am. I can be a staff sergeant. I can be a captain, no, no matter what. Um, the name of the game is to make sure that we extract the facts and only the facts and to make sure that a rank is not a thing. Yeah. Um, and I told some of my youngest agents in the past, even a senior airman, you control that room, um, that they're talking to you for a reason. Your rank has nothing to do with it. So if you want, if they do ask, if you feel free to tell them your rank or be like, hey, you know, I earned the title of special agent, whichever one, they both works. But I think that's what's most important. A lot of people will be like, hey, you guys get to wear the, the nice suits and stuff and uh, yeah, it's fun until you really care about coordinating and every day it's a struggle <laughs> uh, where sometimes I look around base and I'm like, oh God, I just miss wearing OCPs or I miss wearing a uniform um, because it's wash and repeat. Just blend in with everybody. That's it. Yeah. And so I do have a set of OCPs. I should have mm-hmm. worn them today actually. You should have. No. 
Shit, we really should have done a video podcast See? for that. See? Exactly. Could have Would've modeled been all it. All in it. Yeah, we only wear it on deployments or we go to any sort of um, PME, professional military education, where we're with other agents or other people like a, a same rank and stuff like that. So other than that, and even so, it doesn't even have a rank on it. It's blank. Oh, you guys it's don't even get to tab. wear that? No. It says special agent on, the, Ooh, on one of the chests. Yeah. so fancy. And then just a blank rank tab. So it's just like... Is he an airman basic? Right. Uh, I can't tell. Should I it's salute like him? It's like the mystery. <laughs> yeah. They're like, ooh, can I guess your rank? Hey, that could be a fun like uh, it is. game, game yeah. show right there. Yes, I think you should do that because some Let's people are usually, rank. yeah, some people are usually <laughs> uh, spot on. You can tell by someone's, uh, how they command a room, how mm-hmm. confident they are. I've gotten kind of both. I've gotten an officer enlisted. When people guess I'm an officer, I'm like, I love you. You're like, thanks, but You're no. the best. I really appreciate that. I'll take those LESs. I'll take that. But, uh, but no. I'm not, I would like to get paid as an officer, though. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, but no, that's a compliment. And I think uh, I'm more of just by this podcast, I'm more of a transparent agent. Mm-hmm. I think I will continue to do that because education is free. And I think when you answer those questions, you kind of eliminate the rumors, the stereotypes, and you're helping people on their same team. There's no reason for me to keep it all a secret. Now, certain things, of course, but um, I'll always be the first. But hey, you know, I can't tell you that. But what else do you want to know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So you went from security forces. And what made you want to transition to OSI? Like, what was your like, yeah, that's what I want to do. So when I joined, um, one of my one of my dad's best friends growing up, uh, I would consider him like an uncle or a godfather, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, he's retired OSI. Um, so growing up, I just knew that my uncle Dave, <laughs> he worked with OSI. He was a special agent. And my dad and his friends always made fun of him. <laughs> um, and that growing up, I had no idea really what it was. I just knew that he was a cop. He was a federal agent in the Air Force. Um, and it wasn't until I got older where I was like, you know, Uncle Dave was OSI? Wow, and he retired? That's nuts. Uh, so... I always had that in the back of my mind to know that, okay, someone in my family has done this. Um, and then it wasn't until uh, when I deployed to Baghdad, Iraq uh, in 2009, where there was a couple of times where we would take a random individual, it was a random guy or girl who mm-hmm. had really nice equipment, new helmets, no name tapes or anything like that, had the best equipment, had a really nice beard. Um, the males, obviously, <laughs> not, not the women. Um, and they it wasn't until like they got in the truck where I'd hear in my headset, much like these sweet headphones I'm wearing now. Yeah, yeah. They'd be like, hey, Dan, we'll let you know that, hey, we got a couple of OS agents in the back today. They're coming with. They're, they're checking some stuff out where we're going. And I'm just like, I have so many questions. <laughs> Gosh, man, what are they doing? And I'll never forget, I have that uh, secret squirrel patch on my patch wall. This agent was wearing the same one. So a the bottom, secret squirrel? Bottom, oh my bottom God. row, bottom right. Yeah. Yeah. He was wearing that same patch on his vest. And I, and it was like so dirty and dusty. And I was like, that is so cool. Um, and all we did, because I, I was a 50 cal machine gunner in a, in, a, in a MRAP. And so all I did was I looked for, looked for bombs to make sure that my team didn't get hurt. Um, and so whenever we stopped and we, they would drop the back hatch, and I saw the OSI agents kind of walking around. I would always just be like, man, what are they doing? What are they thinking? What kind of gear is that? Who are they talking to? And it was just like this mystery where I was like, I want to know what they're doing. And it was later I found out that they were doing a lot of counterterrorism stuff in Iraq. Talking to people, hey, this, this U.S. member was killed on this day, on this route. Who do you know hurt them? So a lot of our interview, our interrogation skills, if you will, just dealing with people really helped us in the Middle East mm-hmm. understand who's doing what, what, where the bad people are. Uh, and they just used a free ride. They just knew that we were going out every day on the mean streets of Baghdad. And uh, they just hit, hit, you know, got a ride, free Uber from our security forces team. Um, and that was where I was like, okay, like I kind of want that. That's really cool. And that was my first thing. And I, and I was too afraid to talk to them straight up. <laughs> we got back from the mission and they just kind of, they were hanging out you know, thanking everybody for the ride and they just took their information and they went back to their little compound. And I was too afraid, you know, I was too chicken shit to to be like, hey, sir, I'm Airman Scarola. How, how do I do what you do? <laughs> and then thinking back at it, I'm like, gosh, man, like, they're just normal people. They normal are. people on a podcast who have sweet secret squirrel patches. <laughs> that that you know? is really cool. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Um, 
Yeah, and then I just I wish because I that would have been I would have been an OSI agent sooner. Yeah. If I really knew, especially during that time frame. Um, but I always kind of again had that in the back of my mind. The things that I saw, they did the impact that they had, and I had you know my uncle. And it wasn't until um, I got to Guam, uh, my first tour um, in 2014, where they were hiring security forces members uh, to be a sexual assault investigator and a narcotic interdiction, so like a drug enforcement team, because they had so many cases of both uh, drug use and sexual assaults. Yeah. They needed some help. And so instead of pulling from an o- getting more OSI bodies, they were just going to pull somebody from the local security forces squadron to come help. And I was in uh, Fort Bliss, Texas at the time uh, when this job ad came out. So I didn't see it. Uh, and I'm in um, uh, Air Force Marksmanship School, so like a, a sniper school, if you will. And uh, I shattered my right ankle two days before graduation. Didn't get to graduate. Uh, remember, things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if I passed that course, I probably would have went on a deployment or supported some operation somewhere. Don't know. But I shattered my ankle and... Two days later, I was on a flight back to, to Guam. And um, when I came back, when I crutched into my unit, everyone was like, hey, Dan, like, why didn't you put in for this job? You were always talking about how you wanted to go OSI. I'm like, what job? What are you talking about? Yeah. I'm like, hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's better if you do the... You got to use the hands and you got to get the accent's got to come That's out. That's why if people can't pronounce my name, I'm like, hey, it's easier if you just do this. And they're yeah. like, oh, Scarola. I'm like, see, there you go. I'm not going to lie. I had the hardest time when I got that note from your wife. She's amazing, by the way. Like, yeah, she sent a note, a note in with, with your son to give to my son, to give to me. Oh, about the, hey, let's be stop. friends. Yeah. Love she's, it. Like, she's a genius. Yes. She's awesome. But she wrote, like, her whole name, and I was like, I don't know how to pronounce that. I was like, Scarola. Scarola. Scariola. Yeah, I was Crayola. like, it literally took me months. Even with you guys <laughs> saying it, I had to say it in my head a million times. Dan and Tab. Like, Scariola. There you go. So okay. But no. it, it still took me a long time. Dun, na, 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 my Sharona. Yeah, Think my of that song, but There you go. Nailed it. Yeah, I mean, I can do it now. Okay. I'm so proud of Good. myself. Good, yes. Got myself in the back. Absolutely. It, but it took me a long time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a focus. I've so heard. like... I've heard some really bad ones, mm-hmm. uh, both on purpose and not on purpose. Um, also, I love being called a senior airman at medical. Uh, senior, they call you senior. senior airman Scarola because they see special agent and they think that it's a typo. Uh, senior airman, I'm like, let's do this. But isn't senior airman SR and A? Yeah, but they just see SA like, yeah. surely this guy's not oh, a special a agent. Yeah. He's probably a senior airman. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's just a baby. And I'm like, like he's brand new in this gosh, stuff. Those days were fun. Those were the days that I remember having probably the most fun in my military career. As a senior so, airman? Yeah, just oh because. Boy. You have stories? Yeah, just stories, but like it, you're <laughs> kind of caught, and anybody who's an E4 in any military service just knows that like you can play the Air Force, the I'm just an airman card. Hey, I don't know much. Uh, but also you have some, some some sense of responsibility because you're getting ready to be a staff sergeant mm-hmm. and you're in charge of some people. So you kind of can play both roles. Um, now I can't do that. I can't be like, oh, I don't know. I'm just a special agent. No. <laughs> They're like, well, you should probably know. Do better. You should know by now. Go do better. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, that's uh, – I don't even remember where we were going. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I, everybody – I warned him. You guys know. Well, I warned you. We go <clears throat> off topic a lot. No, I like that. I think that, that – It happens. We were talking about when I shattered my right ankle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hobbled in. Hey, why didn't you get the job? What happened? Yeah. Um, it was only because my superintendent at the time, a retired senior master sergeant, he mentioned, he sent an email to the OSI commander and was like, hey, you need to talk to this guy, Dan Scarola. He's the only one that's ever showed interest. And so the OSI commander was like, we haven't seen him. Like, where's he at? So they ended up contacting me because, of course, OSI will find you. Oh, yeah, um, they will. Yep. I get they, a phone they call. They will find you. Yep. I got a phone call. Hey, this is uh, we're looking for Staff Sergeant Scarola. This is agent so-and-so. Uh, we need to come talk to you about this job. And I'm just like, uh, yeah, okay. And I got my crutches and I crutched, <laughs> crutched on down, um, crutched on down to the detachment. And I did my interview like right then and there. Um, and then uh, I competed with the other uh, applicants and I ended up getting the job. And so originally it was supposed to be for one year. One year I was like an intern. 
mm-hmm. to kind of help with the sexual assault cases and the drug the drug cases. I ended up doing it for three years, um, and I'm forever in debt to the agents and the leadership that kept me around. I like to consider myself a pretty cool guy, uh, and that's the reason why. But also, I think uh, well, you know, <laughs> my uh, that 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 why that I have that um, I want to continue to earn my keep. Yeah. I want this mindset of like never satisfied, like I'll never make it type of thing. I want to continue to always work hard. And that's what kept me around. And after three years, many people would be like, I'm not doing this. Like that was incredibly difficult, um, incredibly and emotionally taxing. I'm going to go back to security forces where life's just a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Um, I can promote really fast and I can probably have some more time with my family. And that's surprising because security forces works a lot. They do. Yeah. Um, my work life balance was not a thing as an OSI investigator, but I wanted it. I wanted to continue to give back. It's cause I think it would be a slap in the face if I spent three years with OSI and then all of a sudden was like deuces. Um, so I felt like I should continue and go from silver to gold, silver badge to the gold badge. And I, and I wanted it really bad. So that's, that was the, that was the moment. And then I'll say I did the whole background and um, application process. My wife and family were interviewed, and, and my <laughs> wife has some hilarious stories about all that. That's uh, quite interesting. I yep. know. I wish she was here for that. Oh, we'll she, have to do another one with her. Yep, yeah, her stories are hilarious because now her perspective of OSI agents, and then back in the day, yeah, she was like so incredibly scared. And the two agents that ended up interviewing her became like her closest friends. Yeah. Um. So it's just hilarious. Yep. But again, <laughs> it's like that. That aura, those rumors, those stereotypes, the, yeah. the suits. When you don't know anything. We got them. Go for Nighthawk. These like random wrist <laughs> microphones and the wrist horrible off. issued sunglasses. and Yeah. Yeah. The earpieces. Yeah. None of that. I've worn an earpiece like, maybe twice in my career. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, in our minds, we just have this uh, perception of OSI. Is. So for people who don't really know what OSI is, yeah. what is, what is OSI? Uh, well, I wanted to come on this podcast and be like, well, I, I can't say. So oh, we can talk okay. about anything else All but, right, fine. but that. Uh, <laughs> I like pizza. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Sorry, yeah. Dan. This isn't about you, okay? Got it. Fine. <laughs> um, no, so OSI, the Office of Special Investigations, um, is an Air Force Federal Law Enforcement Agency. And? Space Force. Thank you. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Copyrighted. Come on. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I should brag about that. So it is the uh, Air Force and Space Force Agency uh, for all, all federal law enforcement uh, investigations, uh, counterintelligence, counterterrorism, fraud, personal uh, protection duty, you name it. Um, we do it as far as anything that's on the felony level. That's a great motto. You name it, we do it. Uh, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> the phone calls that we get, uh, yeah, absolutely. We deflect a lot to our security forces, brothers and sisters, or the civilian agencies. But mm-hmm. um, number one, like our tagline is identify, neutralize, and exploit criminal intelligence and terrorist threats that face the Air Force and the Space Force. And wherever your mind goes, we probably have investigated it. We probably can do it. Uh, yeah. Because we're entrusted to do a lot of things. so um, And every military branch has something like OSI. So don't feel lonely. Uh, other branches of service, I'm sure you already know. For the Navy, they have NCIS. You know, great, great TV show. Yeah, we don't need a TV, show. TV show. Yep, yeah, we don't need that. They have this <laughs> podcast. So yeah. OSI, you got this podcast. We'll brag on OSI all the time. Thank it's you. Fine. Appreciate we'll that. Keep um, it going. So NCIS covers down on the Navy and the Marines. Um, and the Army has um, their Criminal Investigation Division, so CID. Uh, and that is just purely for criminal investigations. Um, will they have other specialists to handle the intelligence side or the force protection side or like the Secret Service duty side? So, But every branch of service has that. And now the Space Force was like, hey, what about us? And the Air Force was like, oh, we got you, man. We got, we're here. We're air and space yep. now. Here like you this. go, right here. Big old hug. Yep, big old hug. Join so, us. Yep. So during, the, during, the, our, during our cold. The guardians are with us as <laughs> the well. The uh, To the point where we had to get brand new credentials. So the sweet badge and creds that I hang at, that I you know uh, have with me all the time, uh, we had to get brand new ones uh, to include the Space Force. So now we are the Department of the Air Force. Oh. No longer U.S. Air Force. Oh. 
because fancy. baby baby bro space force is with us now. Got to add those floaty boys in there. <laughs> <laughs> the floaty boys. <laughs> Shout out to the space force. Absolutely, <laughs> guardians. Yes. That was a rejected name, just so everyone knows. Yeah. But someone literally came up with that name. So I think that that should stick. A floaty boy. So <laughs> their low nickname. key <laughs> informally, that's that's them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's the uh, Air Force OSI. If you hear that, if you see OSI, a FOSI. That's it. A FOSI. Yeah, A F O S I. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. But it's great. We drop the A F. You guys in your uh, yeah, drop it A F. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. now, so now we are. It's pretty cool. O S I A F. That O S I as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or yeah. O S I with the Air Force. Either Makes one. Sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of a um, quick synopsis of what we do. It's it contains um, some of the funniest things that. Someone in the Air Force will come across, mm-hmm. and it, on the other side of things, it's uh, things that'll keep you up at night. Um, I think the funniest things that you deal with are the individuals to your left and to your right, uh, the moments that you have, the jokes that you have with each other, because the humor and the bonds are what get you through those tough times. Because as much as I would like to solve a crime in 43 minutes, like in Law and Order, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. like that, unfortunately. So darn yes hey, you sorry. guys gotta work faster i know Jeez. go 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 i will <laughs> let people know hey we gotta work faster so and that's that, that's just part of the job and yeah trust me when you want to become an agent they will let you know they will have a form they'll have a whiteboard of all the things you should probably expect if you want to be an agent because it's not just hey you want to be an agent cool come hang out that's good yeah so At they, least they you let know, you know what you're getting into because i feel like that's with a lot of jobs anyway too they're just like yeah you want to do this and you just yeah, 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 go look at all the cool stuff you get to do. And yep. so it's kind of nice to see that, well, because it's, OSI is pretty serious. Like, and they need people that are very, like, know what they're getting into yeah. and know what's going, what's expected and what's happening because they really just need those focused people. Yeah. And it's, it's not just us too. It's the spouses too, significant others. Yeah. They get, they get the same briefing. Yeah. So. Which I, mean, I think is amazing because. Mm-hmm. That there's, I don't know of any other career field that I didn't get briefed when Dave decided to transition <laughs> over to contracting, cross yeah. train, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I I didn't get briefed. He didn't tell me that he was going to get deployed for so long, and then you know, go on TDY is just mm-hmm. a thousand times. Yeah, every year when we were in Europe, that was just bullshit. Could you imagine like the quality? Your quality of life would just be a little bit better having that peace of mind. I think just, like, yeah, just like knowing about mm-hmm. it. Because like with contracting, I mean, every job is so different compared to each other. Contracting, their busiest times typically are from June until the end of fiscal year, that which money. is the end of September. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's, they're super busy. So as a spouse, knowing what your husband or spouse is getting into, mm-hmm. it's not like you're going to change their mind if they're really into it. I don't yeah. care. Like if that's what you want to do, that's great. Mm. You know? Um, but just knowing what, you know, they're going to be super busy between the summer months. They can't take leave typically. They can't go on long vacations during the summer because they yeah. have to be at work. And then they are working in long hours because they got to get this stuff done. So it, that's nice that OSI will mm-hmm. do that for the families. At least like, no, hey, this is what your spouse is getting into. Yeah. Are you prepared to handle yep. all the different things that come along with your spouse's job. And, and I'll be honest with you, for the, the spouses out there, um, no one is ever really ready no. for those um, experiences or those stories. Yeah. So if you are afraid, if your husband or wife wants to be an OSI agent and you are afraid about the realities of a profession, that's okay. And us as agents, when we come talk to you or if you have questions, we're going to be the first to answer those questions mm-hmm. um, to give you that peace of mind. And to be honest with you, a lot of spouses are like, yeah, I support him or her. Of course. I want him or her to have all the dreams and be the specialist of all the agents. <laughs> um, uh, Can you have that on, uh, as your name tape? The specialist, specialist of, of all, all the agents. Yes, absolutely. That is, that is be, my rank. Okay. That's all you need to know. They're like, oh, he's serious. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think a lot of, like if it was me, yeah, of course I want my spouse to get this job. Yes, I'm okay with it. But it's when those, those incidents start happening. Where mm-hmm. it starts to wear at your marriage, it starts to wear at each other, uh, and that lack of communication can cause problems. And that's any job. Oh yeah. But it's one of those like, hey, I got a phone call at three thirty in the morning, and I have to just go. I can't even tell you why, uh, because lives are at stake, um, or evidence is at stake, 
Uh, that's happened to me numerous times. And if my lovely bride was next to me right now, she'd be like, yep, it's happened numerous times. Mm-hmm. It actually happened during our household good day, oh. the day I was supposed to come and pack oh, out. no. Yeah, and I said, <laughs> sorry, like I got to go. And she yeah. just held it down. Yeah. And I had to go to a crime scene for, you know, X amount of hours. And while she took care of household goods, you know, for me, wow, like to know that my wife was a down ass, she called herself a down ass bitch. Like, <laughs> yes. She's like, I'm a down ass bitch, aren't I? Uh, and that's, that's huge because normal spouses, normal human beings, they don't want to take that on themselves with two small children. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would not be able to go on all these TDYs, deployments, long hours if it wasn't for the strength of the relationship between her and I and my kids. And that's education is letting them in. Yeah. Because if I'm this specialist of all the agents, secret specialist squirrel, all, and yeah. I don't tell, I don't say anything to anybody, that just leaves the mind to wander. Well, yeah. And I, yeah, there, I know there's things you can't communicate. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's lots of stuff that you can't share, but the fact that you're willing to at least share what, like, you can, mm-hmm. so they understand, like, you know, like, this is, like, you know, part of my job. This is what I have to deal yeah. with, and I'm... And for them to understand, especially for Tab to be like, yeah, I, I mean, that's your job. That's fine. That's mm-hmm. what we deal with. And I mean, you got to do what you got to do. It's not like, yep. that's what frustrates me sometimes with spouses when they're complaining about their husband. Oh, my husband's on, oh, they, they pulled him again for weekend duty. And, uh. Oh my God. Like, why is my husband working so late all the time? It's like, dude, like either stop complaining because he might be doing it on purpose mm-hmm. or... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yep. Or just like understand and talk to talk to your spouse and just be like, hey, like, yep. what's the deal? Like, this sucks. Like, I just I told Dave all the time when he had to do like twelve hours and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, once you get clo- close to f- end of fiscal year and yeah. everything, they have to work even later. And so I'm like, well, this sucks. So I don't <sighs> get to see you, but it's I, like, but of like, what am I supposed to do about that? You just kind of have to go with you, you it. You have though. to. Yep. You have to trust the process. You got to trust your spouse. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. People like. Trust is thin. You. <laughs> it is. Yep. Like I get. Like I get. You just. You can't be insecure with your spouse. Especially when they have that type of job. Mm-hmm. You just have to understand that that is what you're working for. Yeah. And I do. I do want to mention how much I love your. Uh, dependent voice. Uh, it's such a good voice. I have voices. I I do a Dave voice too. Cause can I hear the Dave voice? Let's see if I can. I don't. I don't it's know. It's like a whiny voice. No, it's like Tab oh, has one too. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tab has one for me too, and I'm just like, is that how I sound? And she's like, yep. Yeah. And I have one too. Uh, that's a, I just oh. how I make Dave's voice all the time. I okay. don't know why. I have like a I have a like general like young airman voice too. It's like that nerdy like hi my name is Dad Scarola. <laughs> It's like a nasally, like, yeah. <laughs> I think of someone with a very short haircut, like almost like Marine. Like the highest and tightest. The high tie, yeah. And with like dark um, black framed glasses that are like So you thick. are describing that's me. What I, that's what I think of when you make that voice. That is me circa <laughs> 2007. Hi, I'm uh, Airman Scarola and I'm here for duty in Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> I'm going to save all the people. I'm going to save lives. Yep. And then I ended up just staring at training c-130s that okay. were not even like operational so it's like 21 jump street i thought i'm gonna go i'm gonna kick in doors i'm gonna just <laughs> make sure all the terrorists die um and then there i was in little rock arkansas yeah staring at big gray loud planes oh sounds it, so exciting and i had the i had the best looking beret though i'll tell you what uh, as it sits in a shadow box <laughs> yeah as i retired it um but yeah, and again, that goes into like, I want to deploy, deploy, deploy to give myself some worth because this was not cut. In. That's, and that's a, that's a big deal because I know I hear a lot of, I hear complaints from spouses, how their spouse either de- deploys too much or they don't mm. want their spouse to deploy and things like that too. And even like the active duty, duty members even try to like get out of their own deployments, you know, and yeah. it's like. How are you going to like better yourself or learn more about what you're doing mm-hmm. if you don't have the experience? But Absolutely. That's, I'm just a dependa. That's just an opinion. Sorry. Yeah, but you're explaining. <laughs> it's almost like you're dependent explaining things. I'm trying to depend explain it to you. So. Oh, man. No, that that's a good point. I've never heard that. And I think that's something that a lot of people, I think maybe earlier in 
in the last 20 years when we were at war. Um, because I know a lot of people who have had complaints of like, I've never, never deployed. I'm going to end up retiring and like never setting foot down range. Um, and, but it, 10, 15 years ago, maybe you were like, Hey, I'm not going to go. Yeah. And of course I understand. I understand that, but you want to talk about an experience where you're going to learn a lot about yourself. Your family members are going to learn a lot about themselves. It's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Um, but you come back a completely different person, both good and bad. And I think that's so important about service. That sense of service is just being away. And I, I, I know that the distance has made it, uh, in the moment hard for my wife and kids, but I know afterwards they came out stronger than ever. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what I tell my kids. Um, you know, my daughter Shay and my son Roman, that when they go grow up, they're going to have some really cool stories. And I think that's cool. Like, yeah, of course I want to, it's cool to live in the same hometown for 18 years and see your cousins and family members and mm -hmm. go to a ball game, eat some good New York pizza. Um, yes. But you have been in X amount of countries and this many years and made all these friends and travel the world. And, you know, be a military brat. Be proud. And my son being like, but dad, I'm not a brat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, it's just the saying, dude. But yeah, I, I think that goes into it. But like, yeah, you know, I, as a, let's say, a, as a nine and six year old, you know, my kids having their dad leave for, for such a long time, like you're going to learn, you're going to grow up to be an adult that's already has some scar tissue, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You, you know, and I think that's, I look at where I am today, uh, having scar tissue a little bit younger in my life made me who I am today, a little more emotionally resilient. So I'm proud of that. We'll go, and I'm sure you can attest that you and Dave, the amount of times you guys have been gone and you had to hold on the fort and your kids wondering when dad's going to be home, what's next, the fear of if he's going to come home was building them to who they are now. And I mm -hmm. think that's super special. We're investing in them. Super resilient kids. Yep. And that gets overused all the time for military kids. But it's so true. Very true. Like, especially, I mean, especially for those with a parent that has deployed, even if it's one time, mm -hmm. and or, you know, PCSing. It just, it builds them in a whole different way I think than of, just being in the same state for your whole life. I think of, uh, you know, our kids. You yeah. Know, same age. Uh, same ages and like best friends. Yeah. Uh, I just think like, I wonder if like when they first meet, it's just like, oh, yeah, you've been through like 17 PCSs. Your parents have been gone 17 <laughs> times. Hey, we can definitely be best friends. I think it's like that mutual understanding. Even yeah. as children, like they both have stories. Yeah. Because it's not like my daughter coming to your daughter and your daughter being like, I have no idea. Like how it was when we were stationed in Georgia. You know, our closest friends, they never left. Mm -hmm. So my daughter was almost like an outcast where like no one else is really experiencing these things. You know, my, my friends, dads are home all the time. Can't, why can't you stay home? Mm -hmm. But now we come out, out here. Um, and she has friends. Most of my kids have friends that are, have experienced the same life experiences. And that's what you and I as adults, that's what we want. We want to share moments with people who have similar experiences. Let's say you make friends let's say make relationships so yeah and i think that's the big the big thing you discover when you go overseas too is like that military community is so much more tight-knit mm -hmm. than it would be just being stateside like yeah if you live on base and stuff you still get kind mm -hmm. of like the experience but it's nothing like being overseas and being with people because that's all you have yep. you don't have anyone else that's close enough to help you when you need anything you rely on those friends the friends you make as yes. family, so. And I think if my wife Tab was here right now, she would yes. scream into the mic, hey, how about we go to Hawaii? <laughs> Stay overseas. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And, and you talk about like living on base or in a community. Mm -hmm. What I've experienced also, because I'm good at transitioning for a podcast, you are. is how yep. difficult it is to make friends as an OSI agent and to make sure, to not make sure, but. To like, you have to play from behind all the time. Yeah. Because when people find out you're living next to an OSI agent or you're at the same ball game with an OSI agent, it's just like naturally people will keep their distance. Oh, he's going to look up everything about me now. <laughs> I'm sure I already have a background check from you and everything. You're yeah. Probably I have, like, yeah, I know everything about Jen. Yeah. I have, yeah, I have a pretty good profile on you. And that's why I have that lamp too. Just yeah. Those late like, night case files. Yeah. Oh, there's the another Jen thing profile. that Jen did. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. there we Goosebumps t-shirt. Yeah, we'll add that to the profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, Jen is wearing a Goosebumps t-shirt. I actually love it because <laughs> it's my favorite. nostalgia is super important as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I experienced that as not only did I lose a lot of friends when I transitioned to OSI, but it's tough when you PCS and you have yeah. to like introduce yourself. Because I've 
I spent a few ball games or barbecues where people didn't know what I was until a few hangouts later. Like, hey, what do you do again? I'm an OSI agent. And they're like, oh, shit. oh okay. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, we don't hang out anymore. And I'm like, why? Now I'm curious. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, then you got to do your research, yeah. your background no, research. No, then you understand. Of course, I would never. <laughs> no, we don't do that, Jen. Uh, but no, I think as as OSI agents, yeah, it just makes us more curious now. Like, well, why are you so against us? You're like, we're on the same team. You know that, right? Most people who, let's say, get their rights read to them are being accused or there's an alleged crime at hand, mm-hmm. you know, suspected of a crime. So, like, they're turning themselves in. That. And I'm just like, well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the bad guy here. Like, I'm just doing my job. I didn't do the thing that you just did that you're telling me that you did. Yeah. And like, if you see me at a bar, you see me at a ball game, you see with my family, guess what? I'm with my family enjoying some off time, watching the the game, having a beer. You're not just there taking notes and everybody being like, oh God, that senior airman over there. No. We're going to have to talk until Monday. And I I know people (laughs) think that, you know, social media puts us in that light. Um, Airmen do that all the time. They think that we're in... In the bushes and the shadows and all these things. But no. It's creeping. Gosh, man, no. Like the Homer Simpson where he <laughs> yeah. just slides back yep. into the bush. Ned, yeah, Ned Flanders or Homer Simpson <laughs> just like, oh, OSI, yep. No. Um, we are human beings. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be like, man, you know, I never even thought you'd be, a, I never thought you were an OSI agent. I think that's a compliment. Because yeah. people think that OSI agents are robots and they just wear, again, terrible sunglasses and terrible dad outfits. Um, like men in black. Yeah, men in black. Yeah. Go for Nighthawk or... Yeah. Here, look at this pen really quick. Yeah, let me erase your memory. I'll do that after this podcast. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's something that's tough. And I think my wife has experienced it too. Yeah. Um, like, at, oh shit, your husband's yep. so SI, never mind. Absolutely. I, just, I will say, like, because uh, before meeting you, I didn't know anything about OSI. Like, I've heard of it, but I didn't, I've never been friends with somebody who. Yeah. I've never been introduced to anyone who's a special agent or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know anything about it. So yeah. when, you know, Tab and you introduce yourselves and like, oh, yeah, what do you do? Oh, I'm an OSI agent. And I'm like, oh, cool. Because I'm like, I don't know yeah. what that is. <laughs> Which is like more than half the jobs that <laughs> Fuck it. people I meet. Yep. That they're, and I'm, you know, Dave's always asking me like, oh, what does their spouse do? And I'm like, I don't know. That's Tab's response. I'm like, Tab, that's the most important information that that's what the Dave husband says. wants. Like, I, but I'm like, I don't. No, why am I going to ask that? I don't care. But apparently I should be yeah, doing come more on. of that. Gosh, but I'm like, kind of spe- you're kind of, like yeah. I'm, kind I'm, of honorary special agent, you, Jen? I'm OSI and I'm just like, oh, cool. And like Dave's like, oh, God, we're just friends with all the cops now. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. He's like, you better not do anything wrong. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. Cops should be like, no. ooh, we got to be careful. <laughs> cops are the worst. Yeah, For right, sure. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Coming from a former security forces and now OSI agent, yeah. When it comes to larger units, like security forces, like mm-hmm. maintenance, um, probability is there's a higher percentage that people are doing stuff they're not supposed to do. Oh, always. Yeah. So shadies. Um, shady motherfuckers. Yes. Come on, man. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I like I said, like I didn't, none of that, like to think people are like, oh shit, I can't be friends with you because you're OSI. Like that never crossed, even Dave, was, it didn't cross our minds. It was like, so? Yeah. Like that's what you do i don't really know what you do yeah. but that sounds fun and i don't think i think it's funny because dave and i you know majority of our conversations have been not about work yeah uh, it's usually about i don't know normal things like family and sports and yeah because uh, you guys are normal people beef jerky uh, beef jer- <laughs> <laughs> man things how to smoke meat on a trigger yeah, uh, we don't have a trigger. We have either. a Weber kettle. No. Dave's been smoking meat on Weber kettles yes. now. Oh, is this, okay, got it. Uh, yeah. Did you smoke anything else? <laughs> OSI <laughs> agent. OSI agent. I nice see try, what you're doing OSI. Good um, try, good try. No, uh, I'm a big cast iron guy. Uh, I also like cooking in a temperature controlled environment. I'm I really bougie. Want a trigger. I like being in air conditioning. So I have a cast iron skillet and I will do it in the kitchen. I don't want to go outside and sweat. <laughs> my nuts off um but yeah and i where i've been stationed i never needed a grill or a traeger or a smoker or anything because my neighbors always had one and See, what do osi agents do best mm-hmm. hey how are you my name's dan mm-hmm. what you got what you got on the grill there oh hey i have this asparagus you want some I'm like yeah hey in the future if you want to ma- just throw some extra this way and then I just build a relationship. So now I don't need a smoker because my neighbor is going to always give me the extras. 
You are like built to be an OSI agent because that's what Tab always said. <laughs> You're like, like the food. smoothest talker. Oh, gosh. You could literally convince anyone <laughs> and interrogate anyone. They wouldn't even know and they would just tell you things. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, Tab saying that? Yeah. I think we've gone this long. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> yeah. She knows. Mm-hmm. No, I honestly think my my charisma, uh, my ability to kind of flourish in social situations or just dealing with people, it comes from comes from my parents. Um, it comes from my my childhood of being surrounded by people and kids and on the, on the field, um, and just having a natural curiosity of why people do what they do. Mm-hmm. So I think all of that combined into really investing in relationships kind of makes me who I am, because I naturally want to make relationships with people, understand where they come from, because people are icebergs. You only see above the surface. Oh yeah. Um, and I. I, I'm not perfect. I'm pretty messed up, um, as we all are, uh, emotionally, something we are dealing with some sort of trauma. Uh, and I think I like to find that out about people and bond over that. So I think as I get older, I find that important. So, uh, yeah, I can probably sell ice to, a um, what you call ice to an Eskimo. I think yeah. she said that, but mm-hmm. no, I just, uh, you just know how to talk to people yeah. and it comes naturally. It's very easy for you. I think that's... It's just not fair. When I have a podcast and I still can't do that. No. (laughs) I think that that helps too is when I meet other spouses. Yeah. Um, That's helped. I know for you specifically, we talked about this, about how easy it was. Maybe you were surprised. Maybe of other interactions you've had with service members. Yes. Like, hey, it's weird that when a service member like talks to a spouse. Yeah. Hey. I don't mind because I just like to talk to people Mm -hmm. and it's like fine, but... I either find it that the service member is very dry and doesn't want to talk to a spouse yeah. because they're so worthy. Mm-hmm. All hail, senior airmen. Hear ye, hear ye, yeah, Lord yeah. Senior Airman. Bend the knee. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, or the spouse is like, How oh, don't talk to my husband, that's weird and creepy. Yeah. And so Tab. there's always in that I know. Or like <laughs> just getting a little bit. You told your wife that I'm here, right? That's oh, no, no, I haven't. Kidding. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. Sorry, uh, asking for a friend. No. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's what I always find. I find that the, like, the spouse finds it weird yeah. to talk to somebody like that. So Yeah, even like games, like how, how many like soccer games or whatever. Like It's important to also make the, fou- the spouse feel important. Mm-hmm. Like There is no level. There's no, like, I'm better than you. Like, we all have jobs to do. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, who are the, one, who are the individuals that are keeping the lights on? Who are keeping families together. It's the spouses while we're gone. Yeah, because we serve too. Absolutely. Uh, I think the don't shirt. Don't give in to the that. The shirt I'm wearing today says spouses serve too. Yeah, exactly. No, right? We, all need, we no. all need a shirt like that. Don't um, but that's just kind of how I am. I'm like, you also deserve to know exactly who we are and my personality. And yeah, I think because your husband's cool, I want to see if you're cool too. I mean, I try. Yes, so. exactly. So I'm like, Dave, cool. He's legit. Yeah. He grows a really nice goatee. He's unfortunately... Right now, he only has the stash now. So. Good. Yeah. Dave, you mean Miles Teller? Yeah. Um, he did play volleyball the other day, and I was like, where's your off? jean pants? Yeah. What's going Come on? on? Dave, get on it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I would love to... I'm all about that. I'll play some volleyball, but I'm so white that I'll have to wear like a rash guard because <laughs> I'll get burnt within nine minutes. Um, but no, I, I think that's... It's something that a lot of us as service members deal with. It's like service member is cool. Gosh, I hope the spouse is cool. Like we can be a unit. We can be a thing. We can be a team. Yeah. But. Especially overseas because you need that. You need both parties in a couple too. Because it's not very fun to hang out with, go to somebody's house and you only like one of the persons because the other one's very just bland and not fun. Or doesn't want to be involved, you know? And I'm sorry about my wife. Yeah. She's I know. So God, bland. right. Jeez, Tab. Gosh, man. Be no. a better... Come on. No, I think she she uh, she makes you a better person. No, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, I don't last in her spin classes, so I think she wins. <sighs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you guys, you listeners, go to your local spin class. It's super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll have a great time. And you will never be sold. Yeah. Um, anyone who hates on going to your bases fitness classes, you guys are crazy because you all know Veronica was teaching turbo kick and it is like the best thing ever. So turbo kick. What is that? That sounds awesome. It's a beach body program. It's a cardio kickboxing. I'm there. It's, um, 
kind of more choreographed. Okay. But uh, Dave hates it. He's Can I like, put Bin Laden's face on? We don't thing kick of, anything. Oh, it's just man. the air. Okay. Well, we're picture just, the air as a bad guy. Yeah. Just pretend okay. he's right in front of you wherever you're punching or kicking. Got it. Yeah. That's how I got through my school. That's how I got through the OSI Academy. It's Pretending like, take that, Saddam. You want to take him down. Take that, Bin Laden. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right? <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. I I had this, this I had m- my own preconceived notion about like fitness classes on base. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't until my wife started kicking asses as a spin instructor oh, she and does. doing yoga, yoga. And I'm like, yo, yeah, that's rough. So OSI agents were big and bad and, and super, uh, super important. On the outside. Uh, on the outside, but you go to spin once a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we're humbled very quickly. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's awesome. And plus, <laughs> kudos to her playlist. Um, oh my god, it's the best. But yeah, just like and, the f- and I can't. So mean at yeah, the same time. I'm like doing a spin motion right now. <laughs> you can't see it, but like I'm in it right now. Swaying. Three, two, one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that's my tab spin voice. It's much worse, but I don't want to be too loud. And <laughs> um, we all the. My children and I give her crap all the time. Yep. Just randomly. Could be like bedtime. And we're just like, three, two, one, sprint. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, sorry. Poor tab. We love you. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. But I think that's great is ha- spouses having something. Yeah. That's important is that empowerment. And here we are on a podcast. Empowerment. Yep. Boom. Depend explaining. Um, Depend explaining OSI. Speaking of with OSI, so... What, um, there's like different like career path type thing, jobs to do in OSI. Yeah. And how many of those have you done? Do you usually stick to like one thing or do you kind of like the jack of all trades? Yeah. I want to say my first answer is jack of all trades, but Mm -hmm. you have the ability to um, almost cross train within OSI. Um, We call it specialize. Um, so think oh, of it so specialized, of course. Specialized. Yep. Um, so think of it as like a roundabout for my family that has been families that have been in Europe. Um, do you turn your blinker on when you're exiting? Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, I turn my blinker friends. on, especially if you're taking uh, oh, a full you. left. You yep. have to signal. Thank you. And you signal when you're exiting. Yep. Yeah. People I go don't know that zero it's... to ninety four. Oh, it just drives me yep. nuts. Yes. Nobody uses a blinker nope. with roundabouts so here. When I see it, I'm like respect. Yeah, you, you lived safety, in Europe. my mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. So <laughs> picture, picture a roundabout. Uh, yeah, there's like so many ways you can get. You can kind of you know turn your signal on and and go a different route. Um, for me personally, um, I started off as a criminal investigator, uh, which is obviously all your felony level crimes. You're dealing with uh, drug crimes, um, adult and child sex crimes. You're dealing with fraud. You're dealing with murder, um, suicide. Um, computer crimes, if you will, like basic fundamental level computer crimes. Um, you're dealing with protective service operations. We kind of pull that all together as a new agent. Um, so any given day, you can be given, you know, 10 cases. And that's what you do your first few years. And that's what I did. That's what every agent does mm-hmm. to kind of earn your keep uh, to see if you have, see if you're able to be a full-fledged adult um, <laughs> and you're no longer a probationary agent. So yeah. any federal agency, Obey. you're yeah, you're a probation agent. Um, so OSI is pretty much saying you have 12 to 15 months to pretty much let us know that you're able to do this job. And they give you all criminal investigations. Go and do. So after that, after those 12 to 15 months, then you can specialize. Uh, and you can work in either counterintelligence. You can work in compu- like um, computer crimes or you can work in um, – you can do uh, like advanced fraud – you can do um, counterterrorism. Think of anything in the FBI who we're modeled after. You can go and do. Um, you can go learn a language. Um, you can go be a forensic scientist. There's so many different things you can do. So for me, um, yeah, my first few years I was a criminal investigator. Um, and then I went into the uh, force protection uh, counterintelligence world uh, down in Georgia where you're doing all that like counter. Uh, counter threat, uh, counter espionage, if you will, um, which is really cool. Um, if you read online, it talks about the whole gamut of things that we can do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and then I came out uh, after Moody and after a deployment to Afghanistan, um, I came out to Guam, uh, where I'm now part of, again, this really cool word, if you've heard it before, it's called special. 
Um, oh. I'm part of the now the special mission branch. Special mission branch. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so fancy. Which is uh, one of our specialties, if you will. And that's all um, traveling to other, especially out here in the Pacific, traveling um, through all the Pacific and the, the different islands surrounding Guam um, and going to train their host nation law enforcement partners. So with us and our law enforcement background, what better way than to exchange information with, let's say, the Palawan police force or the Samoan police force or the Fujian police force. Uh, so we go in there and we provide them our skills and we learn from them and see what they do as well. So it's a really cool opportunity to give back uh, to islands and to countries that don't have as much as us, mm-hmm. but are steeped in culture um, and we both learn from each other. So currently that's what I do. Um, I'm about to set I'm about to set sail on uh, <laughs> uh, trip number 11 to Palau. So it's like my second home. Yeah, uh, it is. Yep. So uh, that's kind of where my path has been. But um, I have many, many friends who have taken different routes uh, where if you love technology, if you love computers, if you love anything like that, we have a spot for you. Um, we have people that just love that secret service life where if you want to spend four years protecting a general, um, we can do that. Um, secret squirrels. Yep. Secret squirrels. Yep. So <laughs> you got to think we have four star generals throughout the Air Force who need mm-hmm. protection yeah. um, when they travel. And OSI agents are the ones doing that. So, um, And those that just love criminal investigations or those that love fraud or counterintelligence or deployments, if you want to stay, you can stay. Uh, it just might hurt your career because you want to make sure you kind of career broaden, if you will. So I'm sitting in a good spot right now. I've done a, you know, a few different jobs over the last few years. So we'll see where it takes me next. Um, I have a true knack for teaching. So... My next assignment might be at our academy in Georgia. Tabs open overseas. <laughs> no, overseas. Yeah. So, but I, you know, I also have a family who is like, hey, what about Hawaii? They want to travel. That's all. Yeah. What about Europe? Mm-hmm. Let's go back to Germany. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is. It is. Yeah. Yep. That's understandable. So that's pretty cool too. Because again, I didn't really know anything about OSI, but then I started learning and it just mm-hmm. seemed more of like, like the FBI type, but yeah. When you really dive into it, like you've been basically teaching me, it's like there's so many different mm-hmm. paths that you can do with yeah. it too, yeah. which is fascinating because I think that's what a lot of spouses don't really know too, like with their husband or wives. It's like if they're suggesting they want to get into OSI. It's like it's not just like detective work and yeah. just sitting and interrogating or investigating mm-hmm. crimes. It's like, there's so many more different things that you can do in yeah. there too. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of spouses or a lot of members will be like, Hey, like what does a normal day look like for an OSI agent? And I think that's a great question. Yeah. Cause you can ask anybody in the air force that same question. Yeah. Whether it's security forces, maintenance, contracting, you can, you can write out and not, let's say eight to six, eight to five, whatever it is. Um, and for OSI, it's not much different too. Every day you have a plan. But I'll guarantee you, at least in OSI, that's always, that plan's always going to get messed up. Yeah. Because, unfortunately, people will walk in, people will call, they'll report a crime. Um, unfortunately, crime happens on base, off base. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, majority is going to be talking to people. I tell people I get paid to talk to others, but heavy on the administrative part. You know, you have to be able to write well. You have to be able to you know, hold a conversation because you have to document what you just talked about. I can't just talk to you and then it just goes and goes nowhere yeah we have to write about what happened because my report goes to a commander my report goes up to a lawyer my report goes up to the wing commander like goes to a lot of people um to show exactly what happened to read so i'm a very good storyteller uh hear ye hear ye (laughs) towards the night on the third um somebody touched somebody uh yeah so that's Without consent. Without consent. Absolutely. It's very important. Dan was telling me about all the acronyms. <laughs> uh, the letters that have been used. Yes. So um, <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, as an OSI agent, with the bad things that we deal with or the high tempo comes a very dark side of humor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's how we get through it. And yeah, so there's some there's some things that there's we... There's things that you kind of joke about that are very borderline inappropriate, yeah. but it's... Also to kind of help with your mental state of it. Because if you can't find a way to be happy yep. uh, with it, I mean, or like laugh about some things, like how 
it's yeah. not, I feel like it's not gonna be good for your mental health. Like it's, it's just not. you're just gonna go down with with all the cases and it's just yeah. you're gonna spiral down. And that's where you find some OSI agents who are um, you know, self um, if you will like self identifying themselves that they wanna remove themselves from the career field. Yeah. And that's happened you before. Can't handle it anymore. There's two ways to get out of OSI or three ways. Retire, mm-hmm. um, self identify, meaning you wanna get out of OSI and go back to your old career field, or you get fired. Oh. So um, we there is an opportunity where you're able to self-identify within that probationary period, if you will, or, or maybe afterwards, where you're like, hey, this isn't for me. You know, I thought it was, but it's not, um, which is good because it gives a chance um, for us to understand kind of what happened, mm-hmm. how we can make it better, you know, kind of save this, maybe salvage the, the relationship. Um, but I've also seen just kind of cut ties and send them back to maintenance or send them back to security forces and they, they go flourish. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's other side of the coin where sometimes OSI agents get in trouble, uh, but it's every career field, you know, and yeah, it's just then there's a retiring. So there's a, there is a way for people who may have bitten off more than they can chew. Yeah. Again, going back to like the realities. Yeah. Uh, because uh, manipulation um, is big when it comes to a detective and law enforcement, you know, of, of being that person to put puzzle pieces together. How... It's like the hunter mindset. You have to go and find out. Um, sometimes people feel like they're manipulating people too much mm-hmm. where it starts conflicting with their morals or their values. Um, and obviously the, the, the things that we see, um, you talk about child pornography, uh, some of the death scenes that we have to run, that we have to um, investigate. And these aren't things that we just show up and then we leave. We are in the crime scene for 8, 12, you know, 14 hours. Uh, and then we have to go home to our families. Um, opportunities like the child crimes or things that no not one agent is okay with dealing with Mm -hmm. um and then you're dealing with also um people you're getting phone calls in the middle of the night to go meet up with people or go respond to a crime scene or you know it's that compassion fatigue where a lot of people a lot of teachers a lot of nurses a lot of law enforcement officers deal with compassion fatigue meaning i have to listen to someone's firsthand account of something horrible and as an osi agent that is us we have to garner the trust of somebody um, for them to tell us their worst day to a complete stranger. Yeah. And I think that's why I take relationships so seriously. Um, and I think that's something that people don't think about, that compassion fatigue and how it weighs on you. So for me, at least, doing this since 2015, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I'm very, very tired. And I'm not doing investigations every day anymore. You know, I have a wonderful job right now where I get to go to beautiful islands and, and teach others. but. Um, Sometimes that constantly chasing the bad guy, constantly wondering what is going to happen, you know, that the next chess move is, is very, very taxing. And OSI agents, spouses, friends, people in the military should understand a little bit more about kind of what goes on behind the scenes with the secret squirrel OSI agents. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, like you said, too, it's not like a NCIS TV show where yeah. it ends in 43 minutes yeah. and everything's done and solved and the bad guy's been away. Mm-hmm. It's it's so much more than that. And you guys have to in, endure all mm-hmm. of that emotion and you have to keep composure the whole time yeah. and be very neutral about all the things. Yeah. Also having some compassion for like the victims if they come to see mm-hmm. you too and but and then to go home to your family is like I that's the thing. Like I have full respect for all OSI agents who take their job very seriously mm-hmm. in that aspect cuz I can imagine like the shit that you guys see or hear yeah. Yeah. and deal with yeah. on a daily basis and then also have to go home and have a normal family life. I mean, it's not normal, but yeah. no, do tough. the best you can to kind of break away from the job and get back into a family. I can't imagine. That, there is no recipe for that. Yeah. There's a reason why OSI, we have our own psychologist, um, but I remember so many times um, dealing with like the internet crimes against children, child exploitation, child pornography cases, or the death scenes that I've ran uh, and investigated coming home and then just sitting in my car yeah, and like just thinking about how am I going to go be a dad and husband? I just knew how to be an agent yeah, and I just watched things that I never want to watch again. How do I go in there with a brave face? Uh, because my kids at the time, they had no idea. Mm-hmm. 
And my wife and I would usually like, I'd either text her or give her like a some sort of hint of what I'm doing right now. Um, so she'd kind of almost prep the kids. Or if I did come home, she'd have them like make sure like they were eating or like they're in their rooms so I can just come home and like decompress, t- decompress quickly. Yeah. And yeah. I always found my safe space of like going into my closet, like taking my tie off, like taking those like seven minutes to just like kind of get dressed a little bit mm-hmm. to kind of unwind. And my wife coming in and be like, hey, what's going on? How are you? Are you okay? Um, because I also know that I'm aware that she wants to tell me everything about the day. So um, that was very, very tough. And to like see my kids running out, yelling my name and like hugging me and like sometimes feeling disgusted. I'm like disgusted uh, because of what I just watched. Mm-hmm. And now I have my own children. And it's just some, we have to compartmentalize that. And that is damaging to your mental health um i remember there was one specific case where uh, it was a child pornography case and there was something involving disney descendants um and the um that movie if you will and there was child pornography involved in that um and then that was during the time where my daughter was going through that stage of like loving disney descendants where that case kind of ruined it for me yeah and i had to tell my wife about that yeah like that was hard for me and like the dress up, like thinking about that now, like that is tough. Yeah, because I mean, when your kid loves a show so much, and then yep. the costumes, and mm-hmm. and I have to just be dad. I have to just like yeah, be in the moment and be super dad. Because it's tell, not like you can explain that to your kids uh, why no. you don't want them watching it, and you just you don't want them to be. And then yeah. they're like, "But why? Like it's fine. Like why? No, why? it's just you more know? like I will take my emotional duffel bag yeah. and I'll shove it to the bottom. Yeah. Um, and put on a brave face and just tell my wife, like, listen, like, I may have some trouble if Shay is doing dress up mm-hmm. with her friend and they're wearing these costumes. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm going to go play lacrosse for a little bit and I'll come home or I'll sleep over or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'll distance myself. Yeah. Because of the cases um, and the, that trauma comes to the surface. Um, but... I'm proud to have gone through some pretty rough patches in my career um, to now have a good set of fundamentals and a good foundation of kind of how to get through that. But you have to learn the hard way, Mm -hmm. as a lot of people do who may suffer from depression or anxiety. Um, I'm living proof of it. Um, So I try to be as, as transparent as possible and to let people know that if you're not okay, like, hey, come talk to me. It's completely all right. Like, we can be fucked up together. I'm down with it. I'm so down with it because that having someone to make you feel normal is all we really need. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd be lying to tell you that everyone OSI is great and perfect and rainbows. It's not. No, no. But um, cre- I appreciate it. The credit to the agents that go out and do. Uh, credit to the single agents yeah. who don't have kids. But I and are somebody like somebody to talk to about and, it too. And they're like, hey, Dan, like this CP case that we have, child mm-hmm. pornography, um, I'll take it. That's nice. And I'm just like, love you. Yeah. Like, but then again, like they have. But then they have to deal with they it They're dealing with it. And then yeah. they, when they start a family, you mm-hmm. know, so it's just like having the brothers and sisters. And when I'm talking about these cases, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate the names that are going through my mind of the agents that have taken care of me and I've taken care of. And like, of course, there's horrendous people in any job you have. Mm-hmm. Um, but that has what kept me in OSI for so long. That's what's kept me in OSI and the Air Force and not punching and being like, hey, I'm going to FBI. I'm going to Homeland Security Investigation. I'm going to DEA. Um, it's because I love serving my country and also the people in OSI that at these crime scenes at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, it's my wife going and getting 27 McChickens, 27 fries, and delivering it outside of a crime scene. Mm-hmm. She was that my last tour here in Guam. Like she was the... Midnight, 1 a.m., McDonald's, she would get the kids up just to get us some food to yeah. power us through. Um, yeah, so no sponsors. I love McDonald's, McChickens. <laughs> they have been insert. They've been put through our vein, in our veins on some crime scenes. Well, it's like you're lucky that most of those are 24 hours, so. Yeah, especially yeah. overseas. Yeah, yeah. So, that's great. Yeah. I uh, and we don't talk about it very much. If we do, it's like within with our th- with our psychologist or with with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, I have a passion for education. Um, 
and I, and just letting people know that all jobs are hard and just to be more aware of the exposures and the tempo that OSI agents have. Uh, but for me, like I get to travel, I get to do, I have one of the best jobs in OSI, but don't forget that I probably had to go through a rough patch to get here. And this is like a reward for myself. Yeah. An assignment for my family to like take a breath for a little bit. Yeah. Because in, in next this time next year when I PCS, I may be going right back to the field. Yeah, you could doing be doing this. something else. I could be right back. I can be a I can be a superintendent mm-hmm. and and on these crime scenes again. You know. Yeah. But now it's my job to lead young agents and if they're going to their first crime scene, take them aside and be like, Hey, how are you doing? Go take twenty minutes. Have some donuts. Have a cup of joe. I got this. That's good. I'll do. I'll do the crime scene sketch. Yeah, that's good. So. I think that's very important to have people in your in your court that mm-hmm. know what's going on and make sure that you are taking care of your mental health too. Yeah. While you go through all this stuff, because that's that's a lot. Like we can read about it, we can talk about it, but to be in that situation, seeing these things. Uh, is a whole nother level mm-hmm. too. And so it's, I feel like you've found some good coping ways to help you when you come home from work mm-hmm. after seeing these things, how to communicate. I think that's a big yeah, thing. That's is, number one. It's communicating with your, with tab, yeah. like knowing how to talk to your spouse about like how, like, Hey, like I am just not okay right now. And I can't, talk about it yet or there's just a few things in my mind that I can't really say but yeah. I just know that I love you but it I can't yep. do it right now and, and, it's, it's and that, her knowing that and it's hey that protector. it's okay it's that protector in me where I don't want my wife to know exactly what it was or to yeah. know the details yeah so she'll get the wave tops and that's it and she can probably understand yeah. like we even I, I would say cheese pizza um, you know, cheese pizza, it's a CMP. Cheese pizza was like our code word for child porn. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. So like, I was like, yeah, you know, that what? makes sense. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, yeah. yesterday, like, you know, some cheese, cheese pizza. So I was like busy. So sorry I didn't pick up or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And she's like, okay, got it. And for her now as a wife, she's like, man, my husband's at work, like doing the stuff like that's horrible. Um, but as everyone knows, you have to go through a very rough times. And with communication, that's tough. Yeah. You know, you have to earn that trust. You have to be able to be open and communicate because a lot of people shut down. Mm-hmm. They don't want to talk about it. And that's where I was. I didn't talk about a single thing to anybody. It wasn't until I started gaining the trust of uh, of Tab where, like, where I, I trusted that she was able to handle it. Mm-hmm. That's what I was most worried. Because you protecting her. Yeah. Yeah. But I realized that me not opening up, let her mind wander, mm-hmm. that doesn't help anything. That so, makes it worse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, and that helps out during deployments and, and kind of let filling them in a little bit. Um, yeah. And something I realized yesterday when I was doing a, um, a webinar for OSI was that I realized that our career field um, is from one week, you can be running all these horrible cases. You can be running 10 cases of all the worst things for criminal investigations. And then two weeks later, you can be um, in the middle of a country in the Middle East um, hunting down terrorists. The mindset switch is not easy. And also, like, the the emotional toll that it takes. Um, where you'll probably won't unpack all that until you get back from that deployment. Um, that is what a lot of OSI agents struggle with. And then on top of that, coming back from that deployment, going right back into the the mm-hmm. investigator seat that is so hard and now trying to investigate and training yourself to not be that counterterrorism agent yeah like that is so hard like you're really putting together pieces of information to make sure that good guys do bad things to bad people mm-hmm. like it's tough and i remember coming back from afghanistan to moody and being like what am i doing right now like just weeks ago i was you know, doing some hood rat stuff. <laughs> and now, you know, I'm doing a CBT. Yeah. Now I'm got to interview a witness about a case 20 years ago. Yeah. 20 years old. You got to wear like many hats. Yeah. So I'm that just job. Like, it's the mind, sw- the mindset switch, the light switch yeah. is 
that's been very, very hard. Yeah. So, um, something again, I, I just realized yesterday is like the back and forth, back and forth. That um, can get very exhausting. Yeah. And way mentally yeah. on you too. Um, so yeah, I, uh, which is why many, many of my struggle and maybe who people who are listening, who maybe suffer from anxiety or, or don't like big crowds. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like going to the beach or the pool and just like chilling mm -hmm. for hours and not doing much where my wife is huge on like experiences. She will go, 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 go and do from eight to five, like check in 17 boxes. And for her and I, we have to meet in the middle yeah. because I just want to sit and chill as I people watch yeah. and bring myself down, be a little more vulnerable and trust the environment. Um, so her and I, it's been tough uh, navigating that. And that starts with communication. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to meet always. in the middle. Yeah. yeah. So. It always comes back to communication. Yep. 100%. I think that's with every being a spouse, a military spouse. I think that's the biggest thing is communicating. Like, mm -hmm. if you're having issues communicating with your spouse, then, like, you really you should seek out some sort of help there. Because yeah. that's, you're not going to get anywhere unless you're communicating with them and so they understand how you're feeling you understand how they're feeling mm -hmm. type of thing too so i also um random squirrel thought squirrel squirrel secret squirrel um just probably an hour ago if i can think of how time is going um uh, we probably we couldn't even start this podcast <laughs> because we were laughing <laughs> and we couldn't take each other seriously and then here we are going through a roller coaster of emotions um and now talking about mental health. I think that's what's so great about podcasts yeah. and friendships. Um, that's kind of where we got to in this conversation right now. Uh, we got because, real deep. Yeah, we did. We, did, we, got, we deep, got real deep. Real deep. Um, but I actually, I wanted to ask you because uh -oh. <laughs> I have some questions for oh, you. Oh, no. Questions uh, for me. Yeah, I'm the I one. am no, controlling no. the podcast. No, I'm in control. I am the one who says the questions. <laughs> I mean, ask the questions. With your lawyer lamp. I got it. Yeah. I take you seriously. Here's my lamp. Um, and your mug. Yes. I wanted to ask you, because of course you're a great podcaster. You research. <laughs> uh, so you funny. ask the great questions. Thank you. Um, what, is, what are something interesting that you found out about OSI? And what is a rumor that you have heard about OSI that you want me to dispel? Oh, I don't know. We've talked about a lot of stuff. Um, already kind of debunking different things. Um, well, like actually, let me, let me change it. Let me change the question. Okay. Question one. Okay. If you were an OSI agent for a day, oh, what would you want to do? Oh shoot. Yeah. Um. Okay. Because I, it's so hard. It's so hard to say, but because I love true crime, I would definitely want to be on a criminal investigation. Okay. I know it's like no weird, but it's because I've never, you know, I've never gone through it. I don't know what it entails. I don't mm -hmm. know. You know, I understand it's probably very messes with your mental state and stuff but oh like like you said you like to talk to people and find mm -hmm. out what why they are the way that they are and yeah that's why i'm like with a crime scene i'm like why what happened why did this happen how yeah like that's what i like to do mo i mean that's i research as I point to my computer, like, <laughs> it means anything. But I do the research on yeah. the stories that we, you know, talk about, especially the ones that are solved, because we have done some that are unsolved still. Cold case. Cold case. Dun dun. Um, dark web. The dark web. Uh, I would like to find stuff on the dark web. But you sure sorry. About that? <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe not. No. Probably not, actually. But, um, uh, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, when I do the research, I always, like, it's, I, it, not to say it's fascinating, but in a way it, like, is, like, it is. learning about, you know, the situation beforehand and mm -hmm. how things came to be and then what led to it and then how it ended up happening and how it ended up, and then how it ended. Like, what was the, the end result, well, not the, the murder, but yeah. what, why, you know, like, and how they got punished and stuff like that. I just always find, I find the whole story got it. very fascinating and so interesting. And not even just like criminal, like murder cases. Mm -hmm. I'm also saying like, my friend has done research too on different, like she did the big, um, 
oh, what was it? It was the scandal with the Navy, how they used to have this big lavish party. And oh. there was a, so many sexual assault oh. cases that okay. entailed with this one yep. party and just, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, how did you ever think that was okay to do? And, you know, just yeah, I, that, that type of stuff. It just is like, I don't know, maybe it's just because reading about it is fascinating. Yeah, I think that's, I think I, I would see, I would see you as definitely one of the criminal investigators, uh, but also as a, probably a forensic scientist. Ooh. So, so we have FSCs, mm -hmm. um, forensic science coordinators, um, where we have, you know, licensed forensic scientists who are also former investigators that will come out to the crime scenes with us. They will advise us on the crime, give us advice, what steps to take, help us with the crime scenes. And they are involved cradle to grave yeah. um but for me we've been involved cradle to grave too on all those sorts of cases it's just that 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 you're craving what happened and why mm -hmm. um and also sometimes it's fun to be unbiased because like you don't have to involve your opinion at all it's all based on your experiences what you've seen in the past um and taking it from from a to z um it starts from that intake yeah of that someone telling you about a crime and you got to think about the evidence, the room, photos, financials, phones. It's always phones. the husband. It's always the husband. <laughs> um, Sorry. Yeah, but it's just um, interesting to ask. I like to ask people that. Like, hey, what would you want to do for a day? You know, do you like true crime? Are you mm -hmm. an investigator? Do you like the spy? Do you like the counter-espionage, counter-intelligence? Like learning about other countries' intelligence services uh, and how we win a war um, behind the scenes. Do you like, uh, you know, fraud, large contracts, large contract fraud? Is somebody substituting a metal hubcap with a plastic hubcap now costing billions of dollars on an F-35, let's say? What? Who knows? Um, or you want to protect somebody. You want to catch a bullet. Um, well, I don't yeah. want to do that. Um, but do you want to, you I know. I want to sit in the bushes and spy on people okay. with my binoculars. Got it. You might be called. You may be yeah. called. Uh, someone's going to call the cops on you. Like, yep. There's a creep with the binoculars. They won't see me. I'm really good at hiding. But she said her shirt says goosebumps, so mm -hmm. I think she's good. They won't even know. I will have the face paint. Every I'm okay. Like, you, I'm camouflaged. Got it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. With your... Up in the trees, you won't even know. All right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, you, Jen, <laughs> you would be the criminal investigator for sure. Um, now, what is a rumor or what is something that you've heard or read about OSI, good, bad, or indifferent, that you want to address discuss wonder see that's the thing i don't know but it's what i told you i had i didn't hardly know much about osi before yeah so it, it didn't really come up so much of like people saying like oh oh, oh osi mm, be careful yeah um i think it's just the stereotypical like oh they're always gonna like background check you they're gonna investigate you and see if you have any criminal history and uh, and they, they won't be friends with you if you have, like, you know, bad stuff. But you're friends with me, so. Oh, yeah. Are we? I mean, you're just using me for my podcast. Absolutely. That's. Uh, I'm going to delete your number out. after today. Absolutely. So, thank you. Yeah, I figured that was it. Okay. So, not many, not many rumors, which is good because some, pe some people have some serious ones. Uh, when I do the first term Airman Center, when I brief the brand new Airman to the base, I'll always be like, hey, what are some rumors you guys have heard? And there, some of them are hilarious. Some okay, are so like, share. Some of them are like, oh yeah, you're in the in the in the bushes outside of a bar and a club to see who's driving home drunk. And I'm like, okay. No. I have heard, yeah, I've heard that. But you're always like, anytime you're out, but you debunked that already because you said of I'm 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 human, guys. I debunked like, it. I don't watch you yeah. on the weekends. I'm yeah. not working. Yeah. I'm off the clock, kind of. And but... I hope if I'm working, you don't know that. It's true. Ooh. Because they're in camouflage because they're in civilian clothes, so you don't even know. Um, you get to have the beard going, yeah, the scruffness the happening. Shirts. Like yeah. Um Yeah, you can you can tell um you can probably spot an OSI agent at your local Air Force base. Yeah. It's for a reason. Like we're not trying to like hide. We're just wearing civilian clothes. And guys, we just need to do better um dressing. <laughs> do better dressing. Come on. Like let's just get out of our dad's closets. <laughs> Come on, follow a couple of like men's fashion pages on Instagram. Help me out. <laughs> Tailor your pants. I don't know. 
You don't have to be 5'11s. I love you, my OSIs, I love you guys, but let's do better. Oh, like the tactical pants and stuff? Yeah, like, like there's a time and like a place. Like you're getting ready to go. Yeah, like, there's a time a and a place. Absolutely. Like for range day or honestly, you just want to be a little comfortable at the office. Yeah, dress down a little bit, but let's look a little bit better. Let's like tailored fit is important. Let's look Ta- the part, guys. Fit. You heard it from Dan here, guys. Yeah. Like, fashion is important. Fashion, okay? First impression. That's First impression. true. Absolutely. So, because I would probably trust somebody more with like if I had like really mm-hmm. if I had something that I had to share, I would probably trust somebody a little bit more that was more put together, not somebody that looks like they are a um, off duty cop wearing yes. the tactical pants and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, I'd probably be a little more nervous to talk to somebody like that yeah. than it is somebody who's like dressed nicely and they seem a little bit more casual ready open to listen yeah, absolutely and i think that the outfit's important and they don't talk about that in our six month academy oh they should that's very or, important i would love you give me two blocks of instruction i'll talk about agent fashion and the effects on an interview and also um the impact of trauma mm-hmm. and mental health so yeah. boom there you go hire me right got fashion and i got trauma two things that i think those I'm are very important to know about um but yeah, I remember many interviews, um, some of the ties that I wore. I remember some victims just trusted me based on like which tie I wore or if it was open collar and I chose a different lapel. They just felt like it was, they felt more comfortable yeah. um, than wearing like a 5'11 jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we call them shoot me first pants. Shoot me first. <laughs> because unfortunately in today's day and age where there's so many active shooters, active shootings going on. Yeah. Um, if you're somewhere and you're wearing these 5.11s, whether you're c- carrying a weapon or not, sometimes our, our adversaries or someone's about to do a bad thing is going to see that and probably assume like military or law enforcement. Yeah. I'm going to take him or her out first. Yeah. Because they are my threat. So that's why we say shoot me first, pace. So like in a crowd, and if you're wearing those, just be that mindful. Make, that makes sense. Yeah, be mindful. And I hope you're carrying because you can be part of the solution as a, firing your weapon protecting others yeah um that's important to me so yeah in the law enforcement community we just call them shoot me first pants uh but no i I appreciate that's good good to know is that it kind of brings the walls down a little bit a little more vulnerable based on how we're dressed yeah so yeah so yeah guys take your stuff to a tailor get them tailored fit (laughs) do an extra couple of sets of push-ups um (laughs) yeah that's fine take care of yourselves take care of yourself absolutely um but yeah so jen's gonna be an investigator Okay, for okay. sure, I could do that. Yeah, um, not not many rumors, but yeah, we talked about like in the in the in the in the, uh, in the shadows. Yeah, we don't OSI does not investigate underage drinking. We don't we don't investigate uh, adultery. Um, a lot of these misdemeanor crimes, if you will, mm-hmm. they'll be more passed down to the command or security forces investigations. So um, we'll uncover some of those less lesser crimes mm-hmm. in like a big picture investigation, but. Um, Normally, we are not the answer yeah. for underage drinking alone or just adultery by itself. Yeah. So. If it's not, if it's all, if that's the only thing, then you kind of push it off to what yeah. is more of the necessary route. Yeah. So that's what we have our security force investigators or like a command directed investigation. So I can't just call you if like my neighbor's being too loud or anything. You can. Yeah. Of course. I'm here You're for like, you, Jen. Oh, it smells weird. I think there's a dead body. They're also being really loud. Can you just like come? I can. <laughs> I can for you. Uh, but I might just be like, yeah, Jen, let me call somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, Please call security forces from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had people call the office. I'm like, hey, can I, can I have directions to the BX? They've and called like, your office for I'm, that? Of course. Yeah. You're the base operator. Yeah, I'm like, here you go. Here's the base operator's number. But, um, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, also, for my security forces, any, any uh, dependents of security forces members... Please tell uh, your wives or husbands, make sure their berets look good. <laughs> because if Dan Scrolla comes to the gate and it doesn't look good, I'm going to have to gonna call that. I usually do. Oh, and Tab, man. my wife hates it. I she bet. cringes. I bet she does. If it's a crappy salute or a bad looking beret, you're going to hear about it from me. Do you get saluted as a special agent? No, I don't. Oh, darn it. <laughs> no, I used to get like that. Oh, you're good, sir. Or like a, a bit, uh, uh, uh. Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, but no, usually we just show them, show them our uh, credentials. and You show them your badge? Yes. You do? Yeah. That's do how we get on base. Do you have a cat card, though? 
I do have a cat card. But you don't show them the cat card when you go through the gate. You show them your badge. Yeah, so if no, yeah, it's normally for official duties. And if I'm coming on base for work. Yeah, yeah. that's official duty. And I tell a lot of the gate cards too. This is also very important for uh, the listeners is that um, a lot of the times we have to come on with our federal credentials because if it's official duties, we want, we're telling the gate cards that, hey, if there's anybody in the car, we are sponsoring for them. We also may want to protect their identity too. Mm. So, so if you're like a victim or if something like happened yeah. off base and you got to bring them on mm-hmm. base type of thing. So we don't want the gate guards like tell us to search. Like we don't have, we don't want them to search our vehicle. We don't want them to roll all the windows down. Right. Because we want to protect them. This is my credential saying, hey, I'm all secure. I, I'm taking care of yeah. these people here. I'm yeah. responsible for them. But it's also happened too where agents will use it to go on base with their family. No issues. And if they do want uh, all the IDs, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. Because I am coming on base with my family, it's okay, um, and most of the most of my gate cards are good to go with that. So, yeah, um, just some just some protocol things that um, interesting. Yeah. Um. Oh, and okay. So speaking of family things, actually, I don't know why that's a segue, but it came to my mind. Um, we talked about this before, mm-hmm. uh, not today, but previously about um, social media mm. and people saying things on social media that they probably should not. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us, like, you don't have to go into the story about it. You can just tell us, like, dude, shut the fuck up. Oh, no. <laughs> like the, the the one scene that I had? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, years, years back, uh, there was an unfortunate um, uh, suicide crime scene. Uh, where OSI agents were um, handling this this suicide case, and unfortunately, um, the deceased, if you will, uh, did it out in the public area, uh, out in base housing, and we were called to um, run the crime scene, and you know, all of us, all hands on deck, first thing in the morning, um, and we all go there and start doing our thing, processing the crime scene, and if you can imagine what it's like to process um, a crime scene, a suicide case. Uh, whether it's a hanging or a gunshot wound, um, there's DNA, there's evidence, there's photos we have to take. There's like a lot of things we have to do, especially mm-hmm. interviews of the um, immediate area. A normal crime scene for a death scene probably will take 6 to 12 hours, just depending on, you just never know. And also weather too. Yeah. Um, especially out in the Pacific, it rains all the time. You want to make sure we preserve evidence, hang up tarps, whatever it is. Um, however, this particular case, you know, uh, we had an individual that was bringing water uh, to the crime scene. Much appreciated um, because we needed it. We were dying in suits at the time uh, yeah. at this crime scene. And outside, yeah. And outside. Um, however, you know, we couldn't just stop traffic. Um, so we were able to have people come, kind of come and going, whether it was walking or, or, um, or driving. However, the individual that was kind of running us some water told his spouse um, – about the crime scene, which is fine because he saw it. Mm-hmm. He saw that we were working. Um, but I don't know what he told his spouse. But, you know, hours later, after we were done with the crime scene, um, we find a Facebook post um, on, I think it was like a, a dependence only or like a base specific um, a Facebook spouse's, page. A spouse's page. A spouse's of page, some yeah. Sort. yeah. Yep. And it was this spouse running OSI through the ground, saying um, she blamed OSI uh, for all the trauma that everyone on the base has because of this crime scene, because we kept the body exposed for so long. Um, So I thought that was uh, unprofessional. I thought it was very disrespectful uh, because this individual probably has no idea what it's like to process a crime scene. Uh, And I want to be like, shame on you. Yeah. Um, And there are a lot of people in the comments agreeing with this dependent uh, and you have a, a, a few people kind of disagreeing with her um, but I, I I lost faith in society because mm-hmm. you know I'm on your team we're trying to do whatever we can and we investigate suicide we use the word investigate but we use it to provide closure to the loved ones so they know exactly what happened why it happened um, and I, I take that I take that to heart or maybe some of our civilian agencies they don't do that oh he's still dead. And they move on. Yeah. I've heard that before. That's why I said that. Wow. Um, yeah. So as OSI agents, yeah, we take pride in that. It will take long, but it's going to be a thorough investigation given to a loved one, given some closure. 
Yeah. Um, so be very mindful of what you put on social media uh, because we are human beings entrusted with a lot. Um, and not only did we spend, you know, 12 hours, you know, uh, looking at this body and processing this dead body who's no longer with us, um, but to be done and hear about this Facebook, it was just like another kick in the nuts uh, to know like, hey, why? So I wonder what the conversation was between this active duty member who was the water runner yeah. to, the, to the spouse. Yeah. Um, if he was blaming us or whatever it was, I just don't appreciate that. Um, so let's be a little more mindful. You know, again, people are icebergs. Career fields are like icebergs. You only see which, what you think or what you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, next time, let's just be a little bit more smart about that. Yeah. With social well, media awareness. And especially because it's social media. You don't want to be yeah. putting stuff out there that's not even yep. one. It's an active crime scene. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows, like, you, like nobody can talk about active crime mm-hmm. scenes and any, like, type of information on it until yep. it's, like, until, like, the, you know, the police or anyone. Mm-hmm brings it out and then all of a sudden let's say the local newspaper sees that post Mm -hmm. and then now puts in the article deceased air force member was left up longer than they should have been left up or something like that whatever it is um yeah and the words can get twisted mm -hmm. and things can be um made to seem like they were something that they're not at all completely and it can just really i feel like that can really mess up a investigation and and just in the public eye and yeah. And everybody has their fucking opinions. Yes. Yeah. That's what hurts. Which is really annoying. Yeah. Like hers. Like, if you want to have that opinion, that's fine. And maybe go mm. ahead and talk to your friend about it or yeah. something. Or go ahead and talk to your spouse. But yeah, like you said, be more mindful about what you actually post because that shit does not go away. Yeah. And it's guy, they're OSI. Hello. <laughs> they're going to find it. They're going to find squirrel, it no matter squirrel, what. Squirrel. <laughs> but seriously, it's like it's so frustrating to see stuff like that mm-hmm. or hear about it. Yeah. That is, and it's uh, not going away because it's well, on the it's internet. It's like you're not even there. You don't know yeah. what's going on. Like, give them a break. They're doing their job. Yeah, and we are like trying to farm out security forces members to like do crowd control, or, like block traffic. So you can imagine like what goes into all this sort of stuff, and also like it's. In plain view of a lot of people on yeah. on the base. I mean, you can only hide it as best as you can, but it's not. Yeah. You guys have to do your job, mm-hmm. and you can't hinder the area just because you don't want everybody to see. Like, uh, like I understand. Yeah, you. It's not for the public eye, mm-hmm. but you can only do so much yeah, to absolutely hide it. It's very really tough, especially now with you know. I don't say now, but. Smartphones, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, oh, everything like that. Jesus. You can hashtag anything. Everybody and, and, takes video of everything now. It's yeah. insane. So people driving by, they can snap a photo of, of anything and, and turn it in a certain way. And yeah. that's just um, realities of our career field. Thankful, I'm thankful that I'm more of a, um, you know, we're considered more of an advanced law enforcement agency where we will come in if needed. Yeah. Where our local our local law enforcement are dealing with the worst in the first seventeen minutes and then we'll pass it on to us. So like your local your local police officers, like your county police, those are like your security forces members responding to immediate threats, domestic violence, um, you know, people trying to break into places, those are like your local cops. And then if there's a a uh, bank robbery, if there's a murder, if there's an assault or um, you know, narcotics some sort of involved, that's when they call the feds, they mm-hmm. call the state police, they call OSI. And that's kind of how it is with us too. So there's certain jurisdictions, certain laws, regulations, um, which is why as a security forces, when I was a, a patrolman, I responded to, you know, people wounded or people in a domestic violence, uh, domestic violence crime scene or a uh, dispute. And I'd have to like hand it off to OSI. And I'd be like, damn it. Like, I want to see things to the end. Be like, but I was there first, and I want to yeah. know. Which is why there's, like, that healthy but then rivalry. That's, you were like... Yeah. You were like, like now I'm there. Tapped out. Cool. <laughs> hey, that's my <laughs> tap on the shoulder. Did. Like, hey, hey, buddy. <laughs> we did, we'll take <laughs> Let it from the grown-ups take over. Yeah, Thank and, you. like, many people think that we come on... Like, we have our, like, sweet windbreakers on, like you see in the, in the, mm-hmm. in the media. Yeah, we're not going to come in with, like, our sweet windbreakers. Oh, Though God. we have windbreakers. What? But not readily available at all times. Oh. We do have other ways to say that we're always agents, like a badge and a gun. So yeah. um, we don't always need that. But things happen off base, too. 
I think it's important for you to know as well, you and your listeners, is that if something happens with an Air Force member off base, uh, whether it's a, a crime scene, an assault, or narcotics, or whatever you think it is, if there's a crime, if there's a nexus to the Air Force off base, mm-hmm. we're going to respond to that as well. Yeah, because it's military related, so yeah, so you, like us, you have and, to be in there. Yeah, so when I was stationed in Georgia, myself and the local county police, we'd respond to mm-hmm. a suicide scene, or we would do... Um, uh, any narcotic investigations together jointly off base, you know? So again, when you talk about networking and, and working with other agencies and you gotta be personable so that people enjoy working with you as well. Yes. And I otherwise hope... they don't want to help you. Yep, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to piss the wrong people off. Yeah. Um, yeah, because sometimes we are considered like little, the little brothers amongst the, uh, local PD or, or federal agencies. Mm-hmm. It's not until we work with these agencies we're like, oh wow, like we really needed you. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll hit a they'll hit a roadblock if it, if it involves anything with the Department of Defense. Yeah. Um, and most federal agencies know about us because we train together um, at our academy. That's how we get our federal law enforcement identifier. We have to train all on the same level because we're all serving under the same jurisdiction or same law. Um, because the Fourth Amendment, you know, to make sure we don't do any un- unauthorized searches and seizures. Between me or ATF or FBI or DEA or the Marshals, we're all training on the same level. Mm-hmm. We all know about this Fourth Amendment. That's how we all get to know each other. And then out in the field, they're like, hey, I remember why I needed you. Got it. Um, and a lot of agencies will work together. I've had a case where a drug case can can uh, trigger the ATF, which can trigger a postal inspector, mm-hmm. which can trigger the DEA, and then NCIS. So it's just like sometimes oh, yeah. it's like that Spider-Man meme. With all the yeah. pointing at each other. Yeah. Who does what? Who's handling what? Yeah. Uh, but we all have a... But you all have a part yep. in it. Oh, he's Air Force? Yep, we'll take it. Thank yep. you. Yep. Yeah, so it's it's been really, really neat. Uh, the gambit of things I've been able to work with. Um, looking back at my career now, when I used to want to be like DEA, mm-hmm. um, I grew out of that. Because the crime the, the, the crime against drugs, the, the uh, narcotic interdiction is... It does not stop. Yeah. Um, and credit to my DEA brothers and sisters because that is, they're doing one thing, the war on drugs. And that's 24-7. Mm-hmm. Because most of our criminals operate the most inconvenient times. And uh, I wasn't a big fan of that. Mm-mm. But again, reality is the career field. Uh, so where we're, uh, we're now things are a little bit easier. So I could see myself if I were to go into a civilian agency. Um, I really like... Um, the Homeland Security Investigations, HSI. So it's a federal law enforcement agency within Homeland Security. Uh, and they specialize a lot uh, on uh, child exploitation, child pornography, um, uh, a lot of anti-terrorism type things. So um, if I were to do that, that's what I would I see myself doing. Mm-hmm. Um, continuing to chase that counterterrorism uh, itch. But uh, my dream job is to be an instructor at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Academy in uh, the, the east coast of Georgia, paying it forward. You know, yeah. 91 different agencies go and train there. So to be the one to help help them get along that path, just how, how much I needed it, that's just my way of paying it forward. So that's where I see myself, you know, after I hang it up after 20. So what we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Like you said, you just never know where, where things lead you and yeah. where you'll be next. Mm-hmm. It's You can think about it, but... It doesn't always mean that that's what's gonna gonna happen. I'll tell you what, I'm not. I'm never gonna meet such an amazing dependent with such an awesome podcast. So this is right. I, yep. I, I try. I can't help it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> eat, eat it, Joe Rogan. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have like a like one of like a crazy story of like the craziest thing someone's called in thinking that OSI needed to do, to handle it? Doesn't have to be like criminal. Like doesn't have to be sad and we've already been down dark and deep but is there like something that obviously osi is not the person that not the agency that should be handling it but uh was called by somebody anyway yeah i i immediately go to oh man only if you're allowed to share if you can't just be like jen i can't you've kind of put me on the spot a little bit i did I threw that one at you. So the, a case or a phone call that we got where we didn't work, but yeah. they're asking for our help. Yeah, thinking like, yeah, this is definitely an OSI thing, but honestly, it was like 
not even not even close um yeah so i think something that happens a lot is the um i guess extortion um where individuals definitely in the air force have called us or come into my office and be like, hey, I need to talk to you about something like it involves like financial crimes. And I'm like, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's talk. Let's get into it. Mm-hmm. And it usually involves an airman, a very young airman. A baby airman. A baby airman oh, no. who, who had a relationship with somebody over WhatsApp or mm-hmm. Snapchat or mm-hmm. um, insert social media. Um, Tinder. Uh, yeah, I I haven't seen a Tinder one, but I can see it happening. If people want to exploit people, it can At happen least, on like, Tinder. Yeah, catfishing from Tinder. Yeah. If you involve catfishing with money, um, that's what we see a lot is yeah. people will gain a relationship with a stranger for, let's say, I don't know, two days. <laughs> and all of a sudden, said airman is giving $12,000 to oh, said stranger uh, because insert life incident. Uh-huh, always. Um, and then some of these airmen are giving away bank login information like what? here's my navy federal login oh my god transfer the money to your account <laughs> and jen i wish i could like bring in the bad guy and be like why did you do this what were you doing on this day i have to tell the airman the victim to be like listen i can't do anything for you i'm sorry you're gonna have to eat this Ugh. um you got catfish you got exploited um in the future you just have to be better <laughs> Like sorry, Take and it that as is a learning curve, and man. that is so hard for me to like tell him like I can't do anything. You just lost twelve thousand dollars. Next time, don't trust as easily. The Nigerians are not going to give you money <laughs> if you send them a check either. <laughs> My do friend is a Nigerian prince. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're not going to send you millions if you send them ten thousand dollars just and, so that they can get out of prison. And they, and they come to me. They come to us like. So confident that, like, we're going to help. Yeah. Like, surely OSI is going to help me. Oh, no. And I can't even bring in my FBI brothers and sisters. Like, there's no crime here. A crime was not committed. I'm looking at the messages. And you willingly gave them money. They consented. Consented. There it is. Capital C. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. M in the B. Money in the bank. Oh, I was like, okay, you told me M before and it was mouth. (laughs) So that's where I went. I was like, shit, what's B? The precursor to this, we starting this. Yeah, we went we went down some paths. Um, oh, yeah. M was a different meaning altogether. Yes. Before. So okay, money with in these the bank, guys, yeah. it's M and the B's, money in the banks. Um, <laughs> it's like what the fuck is B now? You just keep throw. Stop it! You just keep throwing like. Yep. Random um, things at me. Yeah. So I, that's what immediately comes to mind, and it's just breaks my heart but also yeah. it's educating them on hey let's not give strangers access to your money oh, and i'm yeah. like your money is like you earn that yeah. and as an airman you don't make much let's save it you and don't you don't just give it to somebody because they were in no. a fatal car crash that and made them paralyzed but they yep. can still talk to you or hey they went into a coma or hey i can be your sugar mama um let's see what your money looks like if, let's see how poor you are. I can provide for you. Give me your login so I can see how much money you don't have. Are and you I can serious? give you money. Are, the, that, are you joking? Was uh, that seriously one? This has happened way more than I have ever wanted. And this oh has happened God. to me. People really fall for this that? Ha- y- yes, Jen. Look at, look at my bank account so that I can tell you if you're going to be... Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. And oh. again, nonverbals is not my strong suit. Uh, I turn red easily if I'm pissed. Uh, but also like if I want to laugh, yeah. I'll turn red. Yeah. Uh, but like controlling my nonverbals is very hard for me. Mm-hmm. So when a stranger again comes mm-hmm. to fearless, heroic OSI agent Dan and tells me about this, I have to hold my nonverbals and not be like, are you kidding me right now? What do you want me to do with this? You, okay. that's what's going on in your brain. I want to be like, can I have the number to your mother or father or whoever raised you? Yeah. Cause we had to have a conversation. I'm going to open an investigation for sure on why are you the way you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to investigate you Yes, gosh. now because I don't know why you thought this was smart. Yeah. So again, I, I can't do anything. That's what hurts because we are on a helping business. Yeah. And now they came to me with their worst, Which, most embarrassing thing. Yeah. And in a time of sucks. need. Yeah. And I have to. And, I, and of course, 
I pride myself on like laying them down easy. Yeah. To be like, hey, like, it's okay. Like, and th- and their biggest worry is like judgment. Yeah. And that now for like the next three weeks, let's say on this TDY where we're at together, they have to like see me every day. And I'm like, listen, I've heard much worse. It's okay. Trust me. Um, you made a mistake. What's cool is like, hey, in 12 more days, you'll get paid again. Mm-hmm. Like, just, just save. Start saving again, man. Like, first 15th, you know, just save a little bit more and just don't do it again. Um, learn from yeah. learn from your mistakes. So, yes, unfortunately, I say a lot of these things out of experience. As yeah. a, uh, we call it hypotheticals. Yeah. Hey, sir, uh, hypothetically, um, if I gave my login info to like a, a foreign national, like, is that good or bad? <laughs> or, hey, I had like, uh, I had sex with someone from a different country. Um, now they're not responding to my phone calls and I told them some stuff I wasn't supposed to say. Oh, Jesus. What do you think? Like, it happened to my friend, not me. <laughs> um, oh, God. So, yeah. It, and honestly, I'm just one agent. You can imagine. The, oh, gosh. Uh, all the stories that everybody now, again, has peop- to have. And it doesn't matter if you're in Europe, if you're in the Pacific, you're in Texas. Like, we all probably have similar horrifying and embarrassing stories. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, number one is the fact that these people have come to me knowing that I could help somehow. Uh, and hoping that's, that you would. Hoping, yeah. yeah in but some I'm like, cases, hoping. Yeah, I'm like, hey, sorry. Like, I know these federal, federal statutes. I know the UCMJ, and this doesn't fall into anything. Yeah. No flow chart that I know says you gave money, you gave 15 grand to a stranger consensually. That's not a crime, and I'm really sorry. Yeah. So, But if you put your pee in a V without... If you put a P and a V without a C, yes, you're gonna be in the J. <laughs> you're gonna be in. You're gonna be in the jail. The, yeah, the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be a capital T in trouble. Yes. Yep. Yep. And you will see me. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's something too is that people also you brought up a good good transition of like jail. A lot of people that come talk to OSI agents and let's say I, let's say I advise them of their rights. I suspect them of a crime. They're an alleged suspect of an investigation. Mm-hmm. I'll read them the rights. They can like give a full confession. Like, yep, I killed him. Oh. Here's my phone. Here's the weapon, Dan. I got you. Like, I, I, I'll, you will full here. You will win this case. Yeah. Here's everything. They're like, hey, where's the jail at? And when am I going to jail? And so a lot of people come to OSI and think, hey, am I going to jail? Where you know we don't have just a jail in my office, you no. know, but. Um, because people are presumed innocent until proven guilty. So we will, we will release them to their first sergeant, to their leadership until court, you know, until judicial proceedings. Mm-hmm. And I think that helps out a lot, you know, to know that if they do confess or they do have a rough time with OSI or something, or they get their rights read to them, or even if they seek legal counsel, they're not going to jail. So I think it's something that's nice to tell them. But don't skip town. No. Don't, do, Don't that. do that. Yep, because then we have some good friends in the marshal service. Mm-hmm. We have agents. We will hunt you down. We have agents in, I think, over 260 lo- global locations. Uh, so we're there. We do run AWOL cases. Mm, uh, okay. Yep. So like years and years on the run, we'll end up finding you. Um, on our website, on the OSI website, it has like a wanted, top five OSI most wanted. Yeah, I think I've seen that one. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I, I had the distinct opportunity to uh, help out with some of those when i was in georgia uh, a couple of my co-workers uh caught an awol suspect oh wow yeah so it's really cool to see how how that goes um but yeah if you think we can do it you probably can and if i can't i'll probably have a friend who can with another alphabet soup shoot me first pants agency <laughs> yeah so <laughs> alphabet soup is just like any three-letter agency like look yeah. at my vest Three letters. Yep. That's why it's so cool that we dropped the AF and, OS- and AFOSI. Yeah. Because we used to wear our raid shirts and said AFOSI. And it'd be like, who's a FOSI? A FOSI. I'm like, no, no, That's no. the weirdest name ever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we dropped it and now we're back. So, super cool. Special. It is special. I'm a special agent. You are. a special mission branch. You are. I'm a special pro- special pro- special podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. you ruined it dan i know i did uh <laughs> yeah i i just think that i highly encourage people if you want to know more uh if something you want to do we also take in civilians so it's enlisted officer and civilians 
Oh, interesting. So you can be a civilian. Yeah. Um, uh, previous experience. It could be a degree. doesn't matter what it is. Like we have high, open hiring ads on USA Jobs. Um, yeah. The, like or, criminal justice background of like a. Yeah. Yeah. That helps college for sure. Degree. But if you do have a college or degree and. Background in law enforcement too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you see a lot of people who are former OSI or retire and then go in as a and civilian. And come back as a yep. civilian. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I consider as well. Just don't know. Uh, about the transition who knows mm-hmm. um, you know because you're signing up again to have a badge and a gun again and continue this emotional yeah. roller coaster you know so yeah um yeah so i think it's really really cool uh for us in the air force we're the only investigative authority that has that we're like ncis is just civilians interesting yep so we have we have a one big happy family of all different types of LESs. that's cool <laughs> yeah so it's quite fascinating it is we are fascinating and special you are you're very special. You're special people. Shh, secret squirrels. Secret squirrels. Dark web. No one knows what rank you are. Dark web. The dark web. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that was really good. Yeah. I. I. Do you have any more that you want to add to your information that you have given us? We went through a lot of stuff. We were really oh, happy. We should definitely watch the movie Eagle Eye. Oh, my God. Yeah, we talked about it, guys. I didn't. Even realized, uh, Dan f- told me that Eagle Eye, uh, the lady is in there that is tracking down these people, is an OSI agent. Pew, pew. Like, what? Uh-huh. I didn't even realize. Yeah. I mean, how would I have, I wouldn't have known because I, like I told you, I didn't really know yep. what any of that was. So, yeah. And like I said, Air Force Nexus in that movie, mm-hmm. his twin brother is in the Air Force. Yeah. 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 So, boom. Watch Eagle Eye. It's not the best movie, but no, just didn't... watch it if following this podcast. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. Just watch, if you haven't seen it in a while, watch it again. Then mm-hmm. you'll have a whole new, like, eye-opening and be like, oh, my God. Oh, that's OSI. Live, live, live. Whoa. That's what they do. Yeah. That's not all they do, yep. though, guys. Yeah. I, I, I told <laughs> Jen that my life's more based around, like, the movie Taken. Yeah. Where I have a yeah. certain set of skills. Yeah. And I will hunt you down. And I will find you. And I'll probably shake your hand and read you your rights and be like, hey, everything's fine. Yeah. All is good. <laughs> I am not looking into you right now. Yeah. At all. No. Um, yeah. I, I hope I was able to dispel some rumors or just be a little more transparent. Um, and a, on a in a podcast like this where I can be myself and informal is super important because our career field doesn't get enough of that. It's very um, – there's a lot of things we – can talk about, can't talk about, mm-hmm. and I don't know how many agents have done something like this. Um, so none that I know of. Nope. Here we go. You're uh, my first. Agent I'm the first. That I know, so. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I this this platform is super important to me uh, because on these sort of things you can talk about whatever you want, uh, and if you're still listening, thank you. And you can probably tell the things that I'm passionate about. Uh, it's a service to my country. It's my family. Uh, and it's taking care of yourself, um, and that's mental health, where we've come a long way since um, the global war on terrorism and how we were not taking care of our veterans uh, and our service members long ago, where now we're kind of playing from behind. And I think we're in uh, overdrive, and I think it's for a good reason. And I am I like to consider myself a face of that for OSI um, and to kind of be more vulnerable because it brings a human aspect to what mm-hmm. I do. Um, and also I'd be remiss if I I didn't mention, uh, the sacrifices of those who are no longer with us, uh, those who've made the ultimate sacrifice, whether it's home station, uh, by their own hands due to post-traumatic stress, uh, or those who were killed in action. Uh, many who are listening, um, may know somebody personally, professionally, whatever it is, um, their names on, on killed in action bracelets. It's just a constant reminder that we should pay their memories forward. And a podcast like this, where I get to represent my badge and my name, um, pays the name of those who were not with us in OSI, pays their memory forward. Uh, so that's why Jen, uh, probably looking around and where we're doing the podcast, she can probably understand a little bit what, about what's important to me um, and to be able to talk into a microphone. Uh, it's not only part of my healing process, it could be part of yours as well and the listeners to be like, hey, you know what? Me too. I feel that a little bit. Yeah. And that's what we like to get out of podcasts. You feel yeah. like you're in the conversation. So 
Yeah. Well, hopefully if there's other people that are in OSI that listen too, I mean, it's, they can be like, oh, hey, you know, that guy Dan, he has some good words. Like, I relate to that. Like, yeah. oh, hey, it's okay to have feelings. Mm-hmm. Even though we're in this job that you have yep. to be very, you know, unbiased and just yeah. ready to go and things like that. Like, it's okay to be in your feelings mm-hmm. with it too. Yeah. And you had to know that um, you'll probably get a lot more followers because I my mean, OSI yeah. brother and sisters and leaders <laughs> will probably be like, let me yeah, listen to this. Yeah. So I think that's, I think it's really cool. Um, and I, I can't thank you enough for, for doing this for me um, and letting me be myself on something like this. Um, I can't thank you enough for wanting to do this because this was, this is our brainchild. This is fun. This like, is awesome. It's, well, I mean, we've been planning this for a while. I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, Dan, you gotta be on my podcast. You gotta be on my podcast. And yes. then finally, Finally, it happened. Yes. Finally got to go. And I think it's really good for the spouses, too, whether mm-hmm. your service member either wants to transition to be in OSI or wants to try, yeah. or it, you have that spouse that's in OSI, too, mm-hmm. to really, like, understand from that side, too, like, oh yeah, hey, I know what you're going through, and hey, it's okay, like, to have these feelings as well, mm-hmm. and understand, like, yeah, oh, maybe I should communicate with my my spouse more about this stuff so they kind of understand like obviously you don't have to share everything of your work day mm-hmm. but knowing that both of them can talk and understand each other what each of you needs yeah in this career field yeah it's because it's, it's a small career field mm-hmm. uh but the ripple effect is pretty impactful um and i think educating each other is super important yeah and i hope man i like i tell my parents back in new york um, I, I wish OSI was not an agency. I wish we were never a thing. I wish military members did not commit crimes. I wish there was no terrorism in the world. And I wish there was no one spying on us. Uh, but unfortunately, we're here. Mm-hmm. It's 2022. Um, we've served honorably in the Middle East. We're transitioning to other things now. Um, and we're going to continue to be needed. Um, and just know that if you deal with an OSI agent, um, they're on your team most of the time. Um, well, the good, the good ones. The good ones. I mean, with any career field, you're probably going to encounter some, yeah, some agents that are not. They they are more into the power part of it than. Yeah, and like any job, I have I have experienced that with some of my peers. Um, they may take it too far, or may they um, may hold themselves in a different light than what they're actually getting shined on. Mm-hmm. Um, I consider myself more of a lawyer lamp guy. Yes, definitely. Uh, classy, but provides light. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nostalgic. Uh, um, but yeah, it, good, bad, and different. There's there's bad people everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, just know that OSI agents are humans. I think that's what we're always playing from behind, trying to get people to know. That's the biggest thing. Biggest thing. I think the big takeaway for everyone is like, yeah, don't you can be friends with somebody who's an OSI agent. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. They're yeah. not going we to be. We are pretty fun. They're not going to worry about what you did before. Nope. And they're not going to constantly be seeing what you're doing all the time. They just want to have fun like yes, you too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And, and yes, that, they are it. very fun. Thank you. Yeah. And that's that's really it. Uh, and I think it's something when I go on these trips, let's say if I go to Palau and I'm going with a bunch of Air Force uh, members, if I never met them before, my number one problem, I don't say problem, but like is getting their trust Yeah. to let them know that like I'm here on a bigger scale, on a strategic picture. Not just like, hey, I'm not here to babysit what were you, you doing last night? Yeah. No, because... I'm not here to investigate every little thing yes. that you do. Yes, and I guarantee you before we go on that trip, we're going to have a conversation about what I'm doing out there. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, wow, that's super cool. You're going to hang out with a bunch of cops, making other police forces better around the world. Yeah. What's well, awesome, like a big brother. And that's yeah. it. You know, we're on the same team. And we can also use each other, you know, um, because I like to consider myself like... Part of like a shadow governor, like a mafia mafioso in some of these countries where I can just kind of get stuff done. Uh, you need a, a tire. You need a honey bun. You need a uh, a boat ride somewhere. Like I probably know a guy who knows a guy. I learned that from my father in New York where he always had a guy. Yep. Always had a guy, a guy for guy. something. Yeah. So when I have a guy or a girl that can take care of it. So use me. We have a lot of skills. Certain set of skills. No. Secret squirrel skills. Secret squirrel. Uh, so I hope Jen redacts this whole podcast. So, cause none of it can be released. So thanks for listening, but you can't, you can't know anything. So you heard redacted. the intro 
And uh, you heard the intro of Dan, and now you hear the ending, and that's it. And no intro music. No intro music, because you can't have that either. Yep. Secret. Secret, Secret. stuff. Shh. Does OSI have their own like music? Because we can use that. We do. Yeah. Can we use that? Uh, I know it's copyrighted, but you're in the, you're in it, so uh, tell yeah. them to be like it's special circumstances, and I fully vouch for this. And uh, it's privatized by Hall and Oates. Private eyes watching you. you. Heard that song? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Damn it. <laughs> Okay. But you know I'm gonna look for that. Yeah, one more you time, have to. So yep. It's, it's called Private Eyes. Yeah, it's a super creepy song. Oh, good. Yeah. That just really helps your guys' yep. uh, look and everything. Yeah. Good. good uh, stuff. That or Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. Mm-hmm. Either one. That's Either one works. Too. Karaoke is fun. Yeah. Yep. Maybe if we can find like a free version, a uh, free. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No free version. shout outs. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, uncopyrighted, so we don't get in trouble. Uh, we'll, yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I like. I don't know. Do we like? Do we like put our hands in the middle? Like, do we do Ready, like a, go. a, a, a no. hooray? But no, I got you. Don't worry. Okay. We got this. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So thanks, Dan. That was a lot of good stuff, as everyone can tell. If you are still listening, <laughs> yes. it might take you a few days to get through. It's okay. Yeah. Sometimes I can only handle like thirty minutes, or it's like when I'm like doing something and I want to listen to a podcast, but I'm only yeah. like dedicated for thirty minutes. Yep. I'll stop and then I'll come back. Because you like know it. you want to come back you, and you, listen sure. yep. to this entire podcast. This was, was a roller coaster. There's a lot of stuff. That this we is knew. good. We went d- deep, dark, <laughs> in the dark web, <laughs> and really like into some serious business. I literally wish you guys could see Dan's Crocs right now. <laughs> He's wearing socks with Yo, his Crocs. check it out. Yep. I'm not wearing Crocs. That's a trademark, right? Yeah, it's those weird sandal <laughs> rubber shoe things. With the holes in them, um, and you can add a little special jewels too. I wonder how many people are going to search lawyer lamps on like their Google machines. Oh my god, their images. Google machine! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, lawyer lamp. That yeah. maybe that's what we'll title hope, title the podcast. Is I hope I we did. I hope PC, we gave good... V B M and lawyer lamps. What do they all have in common? <laughs> I, sometimes, I, sometimes I'm glad you don't have a video camera because there's been some. You guys, not, Dan yeah. wanted me to have like he yes. wants to be on a video podcast. And yes. I said that's not what we do because normally I'm in my closet recording. She found face- a new location now. <laughs> my office facetiming with Veronica, and it's it, I don't know how do you do that? You can't really do that. No, you can't. So it but, would be weird. But Let's then he's like, he's like, I'm on a video because I watch video podcasts. And I'm like, yeah. I feel like all men do. Yes. But um, I want to watch other men talking. Yeah, I want to look at their faces. I'm going to stare into their eyes and pretend I'm right next to one. I'm in, I'm in the conversation <laughs> with them. <laughs> they can be friends. I call them by my first name. No, because I, I loved how Jen was drinking her, her OSI mug coffee. Mm-hmm. She had like two hands on it like she was having a nice hot cup of hot chocolate. I mean, isn't that how you hold your cup when you're talking with friends? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's how I do. I so. just love Jen killed the outfit today. I'm wearing she, jeans and my Goosebumps shirt. I like it. And she had her OSI mug. Yeah. Um, I'm an yeah. honorary special agent now. She is. Yeah, there's not many people <laughs> who get that title, honestly. Um, but I can't thank your listeners enough, your initiative, um, I'm jealous about your profession. I absolutely love it. Um, and it's been an f- absolute pleasure talking to you. And uh, I hope we can do it again. Maybe we'll do a 2.0 next year. Maybe we'll do a 2.0 yeah. well soon and we can add, we can have Tab here when she's yes. not gallivanting around. Three, two, one, sprint. Oh, our sprints are so mean. Yeah, though. they are terrible. Oh, I just I just started so feeling the inside of my thighs again. Yeah. 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 It's tough to keep it all together. It's not down there. fun. Um, it hurts. She makes you hurt. Uh, yeah, I think we should do that. Uh, that'd be great. That was like a 2.0. And I assume the listeners are going to fill your inbox with just like, oh my God, we should do that again. Yeah, right? Because it's just so fun. I think I might just do like a couple of spam emails and just send that to you. Like, just oh my God. Just do it. Yeah, just do yeah. it. I'm not, not OSI at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Not suspicious or anything. I'm P's being and A's. P's and A's at G- sixty nine at gmail. Oh no! <laughs> You'd be like, I don't know who this is. P and V and A. Man, yep, there it is. 
that's too many. That's a lot. a lot going on there. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, that was our episode. <laughs> hands in, guys. I want all of you to put your hands in on three. We're going to say Secret Squirrel, okay? Oh, Secret Squirrel, okay. One, I love it. two. Whisper, though. One, two, three. Secret Squirrels. Oh, You're all Secret Squirrels now. Yep. Um, I will interview all of you. Yeah. In a non-threatening way. Of course. I will wear the best tie. Yes. And I will... To make you feel most comfortable. Yes. I will offer you food. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Yeah. And a way for you to give me something. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, boy. Well, I think that's about a does it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you answering all my questions that I've had or even just... You didn't even, like, sometimes I didn't even have a question. You had already answered it. So I was like, yes. Read like, minds. All the things that I didn't know about OSI, now I do. Yeah. And much more. Good. So I hope you all find this very entertaining and very interesting and informational. Um, yeah. I'm going to cut you off. Find you a friend that has a podcast <laughs> and gives you a reason to smile on a Saturday morning. I right? think that's so awesome. This is something that was fantastic. Um, so I try. Yeah, thank you. She pat herself on the back. Yes, I did. That was a power move. It, right. That was good. I feel pretty proud of myself. So um, yeah, I thank you. I can't thank you enough. Uh, this was awesome. Find you a friend that will will sit with you and talk on a microphone for almost three hours well, about all kinds of things. Wow. I mean, we went a whole like 20 minutes before we even fully facts. started. Yeah, to big use, facts. That happened. Which is actually very normal for me in That's Veronica. That's probably best, so. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We were like a bunch of eight-year-olds. It, yeah, it's okay. She it it, There was like four takes of her trying to start the podcast. I did. She I, couldn't even look at me. I couldn't even look at you because I just would... I would either I would just start laughing. <laughs> Again, my nonverbals. It's not good. Yeah. Um, but we made it. Look we did. At us. We made it to the end. Thanks, guys. And, I love all of you. And don't forget that you need to rate and subscribe on all your listening platforms. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, because I don't know. I don't really use Twitter, but it's there. I don't get it. Yeah, hashtag. Hashtag us. Depend explaining. Mm. Depend explainers. Depend explain whatever you want. <laughs> Um, you can email us at dependisplaining at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Um, or on Facebook, Instagram, you can just send us direct messages. Slide in, us. Yeah, slide in the DMs. Slide in those DMs. Yep. Um, with all your questions, concerns, stories. We like them all. Yeah. All of it. It's I great. will go through Jen. Yeah. So, yeah. Do all the things. Rate, subscribe, share with your friends. And don't forget that wherever you go... There There you you are. are. Nailed it. Yeah.